Good morning. We are uh, here at the Committee of the Whole. Today is Tuesday, the 25th of April. And I would like to start the meeting with our land acknowledgement. <clears throat> the municipality of Jasper respectfully acknowledges that Jasper National Park and the municipality of Jasper are on Treaty 6 and Treaty 8 territory, as well as Metis Region 4. This land is a traditional territory, meeting ground, gathering place, traveling route, and home to the Beaver, Cree, Ojibwe, Chushwap, Stony Dakota, and Metis. As we are about to start the meeting, um, today, I would like to call the meeting to order at 9.32, and prior to starting the meeting, I would like to recognize that we have just had a very successful two weeks. The first is the volunteer week, where last week we were able to recognize volunteers within our community and also within our organization. We also um, came to the end of a 10 day ski and pride festival. Again, a very successful event and has drawn individuals to our municipality, um, helping our businesses and showing that we are a open, welcoming um, community, uh, which happens year round. We take a week to celebrate that or 10 days to celebrate, but that is the community that we are. And tying those two together, I had the privilege of being at the brunch to see the awards um, that were presented on Sunday to businesses and to individuals and organizations. Youth was rec were recognized. And I, at this point, would like to recognize a member of our organization um who was voted as the pride volunteer of the year first of the year and that is our captain in our fire department Kelly Dawson and I thought that was a wonderful recognition having known Kelly for well over 10 years and the contribution that she made to the community I was very proud to be there along with Councilor Hall Councilor Hall you'll notice is not here today she's under the weather but uh, her and I were there sitting at the table with her, and when she received the award, and it was a very uh, great experience. And that ended the the, um, the 10 days of celebration. But uh, congratulations to uh, our employee, Captain Dawson. So, counselors and Kathleen, uh, Councillor Waxer, welcome. Glad to have you here. I would now like to formally call a meeting to order. Are there any additions to the agenda? Oh, sir, the moon. I I do not. That's fine. I was just going to make a comment. Um, speaking of under the weather, um, did you have a three-hour tour that maybe went a little longer yesterday? You notice your little horse. You're good. I am good. Um, overtime the other night had me a little bit cheering. Um, you know, my Oilers pencil is here. My Oilers pen is here. Um, it may be a little early to be wearing jerseys, but uh, that could be the boss that went on. So, we, do we have any ad uh, additions to the agenda? Your Worship. Not an addition, just a recognition that um, after agenda item 10, I don't know what we'll do um, with the missing number 11. <laughs> um, well, I have a, an option. We can either add agenda item 11 
or we can um, a very astute observation actually we can then um, change our agenda to number 11 for adjournment and uh, that way I don't think we'll be stalled we should be able to be unless we want to put number 11 for lunch <laughs> So noted, we will make the adjustment. Number number 12 becomes number 11. Are there any other additions to the agenda or changes? Thank you, councillors. There are no additions to the agenda. I need approval for the agenda. Councillor Demota. All those in favor? Thank you. That is all of us, including Councillor Waxer. Moves us on to number four, April 11, 2023, Committee of the Whole. We need an approval of the, um, they were, that, that those minutes were approved on April 18th. Item number 4.1, business surviving arising from the minutes. Uh, is there any business arising from the minutes? Looking at the screen and around the table, I see none. Item five, delegations. We have no delegations here. All right, we'll move on to number six. Um, I have not been informed of any correspondence. Um, Mr. Gibbon, do we have any correspondence? No correspondence. Brings us now to item seven, new business 7.1, early learning and child care action plan. And I believe we have Ms. Daniels here. Not Ms. Daniels, my apologies. Ms. Daniels, sorry. Please proceed. <laughs> no ass on Daniel. She's not on there. Thanks, Emma. Uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Uh, so I'm here this morning to present Jasper's Early Learning and Child Care Action Plan. The plan includes a number of action items based on the recommendations in the ELCC strategy report you received back in December. Stakeholder meetings have been conducted over the past few months, and ideas from those meetings are. I can just talk. Okay. Sorry, technical difficulties. Um, the purpose of the action plan is to guide council and administrative efforts to support early learning and childcare programs and services in Jasper. It will also ensure that ELCC is considered during higher level decision making. Quality, affordable childcare is an essential service for Jasper families. It supports our economy, our businesses, our community, and improves our quality of life. Historically, municipal governments have played an important role in the development and support for early learning and childcare in the province. Today, only four municipally supported centers established remain in operation. We are fortunate in Jasper that our municipality has made early learning and childcare a priority, and we hope that Council supports our recommendation and adopts this action plan as presented. Uh, we think that the plan speaks for itself, so I'm open to questions and comments, and uh, if anyone has any. Thank you. Um, Councillors, are there any questions? Uh, Councillor Keller MB. Thank you, Ms. Daniels. A very great report. I quite enjoyed uh, reading it. I'm curious, how many children do we have on the list currently waiting for daycare? Uh, the wait list as of yesterday had 96 children on it. So we definitely need more daycare. Yes. And do you find that it's the younger age, like the newborns, or the older age that you're seeing the waiting list for? Yes, I would say that the list is mostly made up of people who are either currently pregnant or on mat leave or who just had or have an infant and toddler. There is other options in the community for care for three to five year olds. So uh, we don't see that as a as the higher need right now. Thank you for that. You're welcome. 
other counselors, uh, Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through you to Ms. Daniel. I, I'm not sure how to begin. Um, I, I have um, a concern, and my concern is open to criticism that it's about semantics. I think it's about process. When we began this endeavor, um, in August of 21, the idea was to develop a strategy. Uh, that led ultimately to a report that we received in December of 2022. And that led to the document before us today, which is an action plan. But I struggle to comprehend where we actually developed a strategy. We started with the intent of developing a strategy. The report we received, as I recall, provided context and considerations to create a strategy. So what I was expecting now was not an action plan, but a strategy. And again, I, I can understand that perhaps that is a bit semantic, but it just seems to me that we have skipped a crucial step, which is the development of a strategy so that we can then align actions to achieve the strategy and we've gone straight to actions. And I, I struggle with how, how we got here because I, I don't read this action plan as a strategy. It's, it's quite precise. And it seems to me that it assumes a direction that we have not yet confirmed. So we said all that, I, it, it's not the content of the report before us. It's what I think is a missing piece, which is the strategy itself. So can you speak to that at all? Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick, um, we, uh, your worship and all of council. Uh, the short answer is uh, we believe and, and the intent of the action plan is that without doing these actions, we can't, can't really give a fully fleshed out strategy. And on the other side of that coin, the strategy is to make these action plan items occur so that we have a unified strategy that has actions. So you're right about the report giving context and the report gave uh, priority areas to work on, which in the report writer's mind is in essence, the strategy. You would take those priority areas and work on them. And so our action items are our attempt to do that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks for that, Director Reed. Uh, additionally, Your Worship, it, I would say that uh, in the plan that's in front of you, um, I think you can see some of those elements of a strategy. The strategy is to uh, is principle based, um, and you can see those guiding principles in the document. So, you know, what at a high order, what are the principles that we're going to undertake any actions uh, around? Uh, how are we, what are we going to base those actions in? And so that is, you know, ensuring that they're relevant to the community, uh, that we undertake critical analysis of anything that we're doing, that we seek continuous improvement in the entire system, and that there's a collective and shared responsibility. This isn't only the municipality doing it alone. So those are the, the foundational principles, which I believe are a reasonable part of a strategy, um, or the principles that you're acting in. And then uh, maybe laid out a little bit differently, but uh, as you look down below in the areas of focus, so uh, I would suggest that this is akin to council's strategic priorities uh, in your strategic plan, where you have an area of focus on housing, you have an area of focus on relationships, you have an area of focus on and so on. You know, you, we have the six uh, areas of focus in council's strategic plan. Uh, this document also has six areas of focus. Um, and so, again, similar to council strategic plan that way. Um, again, maybe laid out with a little bit more detail. So, uh, in council strategic plan, you have given us outcome statements. 
uh, in this document, the outcome statements are also uh, partnered with the additional detail about the activities and the outputs that we expect in order to achieve those outcomes. So it is it is definitely laid out differently, uh, but I think the essential elements of the strategy, uh, the strategy could be summarized to say that the municipality is going to seek to increase accessibility, improve affordability, uh, uh, increase flexibility, improve inclusivity, uh, continue to improve quality, and then to get into a new area of advocacy and leadership. So at a high order, that's the strategy. That's what the municipality should do. And then because it is an administrative plan that is going to influence business planning and budgets, there is more detail there than you might see in a council strategic plan. So I, I hope that I appreciate what you're saying. Uh, I know that the layout is somewhat different, um, but as administration, we want to make sure there was something that we could take away and say, okay, so what should we actually be doing coming out of this, uh, along with what are the principles uh, which we're going to ground our work in? Uh, go ahead, um, uh, Mayor Ireland. Thank you for that, um, Mr. Given and, and Mr. Reed. When I look at what is presented as an action plan, say on affordability, just as an example, I don't see any reference or any suggestion, any strategy. Um, to approach affordability through, for example, public-private partnerships. So I, I see a reference under um, flexibility uh, to explore partnerships with employers. But I was looking for something um, in terms of strategic direction that we would perhaps commit ourselves to a program of engaging others and not be focused quite so much on the provision of municipal early learning and childcare. Um, we have we have committed to our own actions and our own form of quality childcare. But in order to to increase accessibility, affordability, um, and optionality or flexibility for residents. Do we have a strategy to engage the public and industry in a different way? I, I don't really see that in, in this document. And to me, it's important that we understand holistically, not as a municipal organization, but as a community, where we want to go. And uh, as Mr. Given indicated, a lot of the outcomes are, are quite specifically focused on budget, which makes it more a municipal organizational approach to childcare rather than a community approach. And I, I still struggle to see how we intend to engage others to improve all those other necessary components of accessibility, affordability, optionality um, in a context larger than just the municipal offering. Uh, CEO, Mr. Gillen. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Uh, Your Worship, I, you, you know, you've hit on exactly the right area where that does show up. And I guess uh, before I get into detailing uh, sort of the direct answer to your question, I think the other thing that I'd say for council is the reason that this is here is so that council can influence the plan. I mean, you know, this is not administration telling you what the plan is. This is administration showing you a draft of the plan. And if there are areas that you think need to be changed, improved, added, this would be your time to tell us so. And then we can make those amendments and, and return if necessary. So so that's why it's here. And this is the intent of being a committee so we can have this kind of dialogue. Uh, have your worship uh, specifically on, on engaging others uh, outside of just direct delivery by the municipality. Uh, you're right, the flexibility area is really where that shows up. Um, points number two and three in particular uh, speak directly to engaging other potential service providers. If you look at the outputs, um, uh, so under number two, the activity is explore new types of childcare options for the community. And if you look at the outputs column, you'll see 
um, one, supported by the municipality, a pop-up child care service, an on-demand pop-up child care service. Uh, but the second and third bullet points there, investigate child care cooperatives operated by the community and supported by the municipality. Uh, that support could be administrative, uh, could be in training, could be in any other number of ways, but it is specific to saying operated by the community. Uh, and the third bullet point, explore partnerships with employers. Um, I think administration wanted to leave the potential types of partnerships as broad as possible, um, but those two speak to uh, engaging others rather than just direct municipal service delivery. Uh, and then point number three would be something that would be very new for uh, our community, uh, explore the option of becoming a family day home agency. Uh, Family day home agencies don't deliver service, a child care service themselves directly. They essentially coordinate other, you know, day home uh, child care providers. And so that's uh, a third type of child care that administration is recommending should be explored. So um, while there isn't, well, they may be uh, not as front and center as they could be, uh, there certainly is an intention to work with others and to invite others to become more involved in the provision of child care um, in addition to the actions that are specific to what we might do as the municipality. Um, Director Reed. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick and, and through to your worship and council. Just to add to what CAO given just very well uh, spoken uh, comments there. Even I, I would just like to mention that each focus area is not uh, seen in isolation, this whole report. So uh, item one, area of focus one, accessibility. Item one is engage with community organizations to explore potential collaboration or childcare. So right on item one also relates to what you're speaking of, uh, Your Worship. Uh, but I want to bring attention to the fact that the report is not, we, we would use the whole report and action the whole report in, in concert. So, this item one and focus area one will also inform affordability. It will also inform flexibility. Um, but we felt that this was the way to categorize the action items in a way that was understandable to all of us. Thank you for that. Councillors? Councillor Gimona? Well, I just, I would like to, to hear if, if uh, his worship has been satisfied with that information because just when I thought I was able to grasp uh, the concept of this, uh, you know, uh, I got thrown a curveball and, and uh, you know, it's kind of interesting. And um, now I'm, I'm a little bit more scrambled than I was when I, when I came in today. So, you know, is, is the idea, uh, Mr. Mayor, that um, you want to see something a little bit more plug and play in the sense that, for an example, we have uh, the the CG project going on for housing. Like we're at a stage right now where we're going to be moving forward and we might be looking for community partnerships in that development because it's something of magnitude. This is something of a greater magnitude. And, um, we're at a spot now where we know that we have to go to partnerships, but we don't have the slots set up for those partnerships yet. And that, is that kind of what you're looking for is having something a little bit more structured as far as having those building blocks in place? Mayor Island. Uh, thank you, um, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through you to Councillor Demora. Um, I still have to distill the information. Uh, I, I work slowly. Uh, but it's your question was whether I want more detail. Um, I think this was what I heard in your question, but it, it's really just that I I sense that a piece is missing. And <clears throat> while it is true that you need a plan to action um, a strategy, it would be helpful to me to understand the strategy first. And so the report, I think, is being taken to be a strategy. But I don't think it was intended as a strategy. It was intended, as I read it, to provide context to create the strategy. And so, yes, there are 
six um, elements to that. But as I understood the report when it was delivered, it's take those things into consideration and create a strategy. Once the strategy is created, then you create a plan to action that strategy. I, if, if anybody asks me what our strategy is for early learning and childcare, I don't think I can report or point to the report because it clearly was not a strategy. It was it was the groundwork to develop a strategy. And we've gone from that to an action plan. And again, as I said at the outs, the outset of my first remarks, um, maybe it's just semantics. Maybe I've missed picture. But I can't point right now to the strategy that Council set out to create in August of 21. And even as recently as December, the motion was um, to come back with a strategy based on the report. And I still see a an action plan, which we will need. I have no quarrel with that, but I don't. I still don't know what really the strategy is. So, in, in general terms, of you, there was a question today: How many are on the waiting list? Well, is the strategy to eliminate a waiting list? Is the strategy to eliminate a waiting list purely with municipal facilities, or what proportion might be accommodated by? The private sector. Where do we think we're going? Mm. And if, if I had a sense of that strategy, then it would be easier to to view the plan in that context. And, and I, I still don't exactly know what our strategy is with respect to early learning and childcare for the community, not just for the municipal organization. And I, I continue to struggle. We don't have to make the decision today, so I I can beat myself up for another week at least on this. <laughs> but I, I'm still I'm still not sure that we've we've sequentially hit the mileposts that we set for ourselves. And the first being development of the strategy. I will go to CAO um, even first to respond. Uh, Thanks very much, Deputy Mayor Mount. Uh, so, just one point I think to make is that uh, you know this is here for discussion. Uh, if if uh, committee, uh, you know, on the whole, uh, feels that there need to be changes made, then, then it is helpful for for administration. If committee can say what those changes are and give us some direction, so we can go away and come back, because we are actually asking you to make a decision today or some decisions that either this is good, send it forward to council, or this isn't good. We want these changes. And we do need those, you know, that direction, and it does need to be given, you know, hopefully by motion. So if there are specific changes uh, that could be highlighted, that would be that would be helpful, and the administration would be happy to go in and sort of incorporate those. One portion that might be helpful is if, uh, and I guess this is for your worship, but I'm curious what other uh, committee members think. But you know, what are the essential elements of that would define a strategy that are missing? And if we were aware of what elements are missing that it would help us build something that meets the definition of a strategy. Um, because we, you know, as I said earlier, I think some of those elements may be there. And so I think as administration, we obviously didn't hit the mark exactly on this. And so if, if council could define what is missing, that would help us make sure that we could fill that gap. So uh, thank you, CEO uh, Given. I'm gonna go to Mayor Ireland and Councillor Demota just so that this round of discussion um, aligns. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melvin, and, and I will be brief then. I'm not suggesting at all that you missed the mark. I have concerns. I don't speak for council. Uh, it, it is just that I seem to be lost um, in process, which is not atypical for me. Doesn't reflect at all on on the product that comes to us. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Councillor Demona, are you indicating Councillor Waxer or your comments? Well, 
both because I thought I saw a hand come up, but I just wanted to finish up and and you know I just I wanted to apologize because uh, my intent wasn't to put uh, through you to to Mayor Ireland to to put you on the spot, sir, and I appreciate that extra level of clarity because um, even though you don't speak for council, you are um, you know the head, and uh, if you're unclear, then you know if we if we're steering the ship together, you've got the hand on the wheel. We want to make sure we're collectively going in the right place and um i i think i'm following you and, and the comments that i made and the points that i was speaking to i think are essentially similar to what you're saying just semantically different um however that does help me in in the thought process and i'm not sure if an ad hoc committee is going to spin off of this but uh I, I would think it would i'd like to get some input from people who actually have uh, experience with children in, in the daycare system and or uh, some governance over it. So I'll leave that as a segue. Thank you. Uh, Council Roxer, did you wish to weigh in? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I was one uh, through you, Deputy Mayor Melnick, to administration. I wondered if you could provide us with an update on the federal and provincial strategy for affordable early learning and care. I'm currently uh, visiting my daughter in Prince Edward Island, and I know that the uh, childcare fees across the board in this province are $20 a day. And I know that we're not there in Alberta, and I wondered if you could provide uh, some information for me on that. Thank you, Councillor Waxer. I'll turn to Ms. Daniels. Uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through to Councillor Waxer. Uh, we have been given a very short update from the government that the current plan as it is will continue for the next little while until um, the election kind of passes. So right now we have an extension of what is currently happening. So the affordability grant, uh, the different amounts per age group. So uh, the 635 for infants, uh, 510 for toddlers and then 454 um, preschool age. So that's currently what they're still uh, holding us to. We actually just got the agreement in our email this morning. So I haven't even looked at it yet, but uh, I could probably give you a more update next uh, time that we meet, but that's what they've told us so far. Thank you for that. Um, Councilor Waxer. Uh would you would it be possible for you to give us um, translate that information to uh, an hourly rate that um, at this point approximately? Uh, sorry, yeah, because I know that the uh, the federal plan was going down to ten dollars or or a daily rate. I guess is what I was looking for um, since it's uh, it's uh, twenty. $20 here a day, and I was just curious what that would translate to in Alberta. If we were looking at a 21-day month, which is typically what how we figure out the daily rate, uh, the lowest cost at our daycare would be $35 a day, going up to $42 a day. Thank you so much. For, thank you so much for that. Um, if it's possible, I had another question. Um, I was also interested in the concept of the pop-up. I was not familiar with that uh, with that uh, strap, that kind of uh, system, and I wondered if you could explain what that would mean. Thank you, Councillor Waxer. Uh, so, and Deputy Mayor Melnick through to Councillor Waxer. So the pop-up uh, daycare was something that came up during the surveys that the researchers did. Um, and it would be kind of like a drop-in center. So similar to um, like a parent link center set up for uh, childcare. So um, it might happen at a multi-purpose hall or in a room in a church. Um, they could pop up anywhere in the community and just be something that is used for childcare for a short time, um, typically for any age group and not always a licensed 
program. Elsa Waxer. And uh, I, I can give someone else a turn, but I did have one more question. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I have a real interest in the concept of the weekend and evening care. And uh, I see that's addressed somewhat here. Um, but I wondered what the biggest barriers you believe would be to providing that as a strategy to better need the, meet the needs of the community. Ms. Daniel. Uh, Deputy Mayor Malnick to uh, Councillor Waxer. Uh, well, off the top of my head, I would say staffing <laughs> would definitely be the largest barrier. Um, right now, we are finding it hard to find staff to fill the current positions we have. So if we were to open later or open earlier and then open on the weekend, we would definitely need additional staffing. So I'd say that was definitely the number one barrier. Two would probably be cost of operating our facility seven days a week, um, because not only would we be paying childcare staff, we'd have to have custodians. We have to have a certain number of staff on site to uh, for ratio and for levels. Uh, so I think those would probably be the top two barriers. Uh, if we were thinking about outside the municipal space uh, or the municipally run program, we'd probably the number one problem would be space to house the, the child care program. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor DeMota, uh, or sorry, Councillor Waxer, any other questions? No, that's uh, good for now. Thank you. Councillor DeMota. Well, yeah, and you know, and, and you look at the underlying factors as well when we're talking about space and staff. Uh, I think the number one hurdle is uh, great for housing in our community, not just affordable housing, but equitable housing in the sense that we have different demographics with different needs. And in order to, you know, attract uh, and retain uh, qualified people in our community, that's, I, I think, Again, before we, we talk about those hurdles, uh, I think one of the biggest issues now, which we're solely addressing in the community, is uh, is having more housing for people in our community, uh, let alone professionals, but young families too. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Keller MP. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Nolik. Uh, you to Ms. Daniels. I'm curious that if you're working with partners down the road and you did find space and partners were willing to set up a daycare, would funding follow for them? Um, or would they be eligible for the uh, $10 a day if eventually we got that as well? Um, best answer is possibly. Uh, right now, the government, when the affordability grant came out and was signed, they did kind of put a cap on new centers being eligible for it. They have since kind of addressed, readdressed that, and there is options for private daycares right now to, to get funding. Um, so it is definitely a possibility, depending on what the government allows at that point. Uh, new centers would also get certain government funding to set up a new center, so space creation dollars, uh, things like that. Um, but it isn't a lot of money. So um, if someone was going to be opening a new program, they would probably have to have a considerable amount of capital to, to do that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, any other counselors? If not, I have um, a couple of questions and comments. Um, Ms. Daniel, you said that there was 96 on the wait list for daycare. Is that, uh, that, that doesn't mean that we have 96 people that would immediately be able to go in. Is that list include people who are on a list in anticipation they'll need day daycare in a year from now. In other words, I want to understand the severity of the 96 people on the wait list um, because my understanding is there are people on the wait list now 
because they'll need the space in a year and a half. That is correct. You understand it very well. So we do probably have a handful of people, uh, I would say under 10, who want in today and or would take the spot. There's probably more who would take the spot today if it was offered, but who would need the spot right now. Most of the people are looking for care for about six months to 18 months from now. Some of them are just pregnant. So they're going to have their pregnancy plus then their mat leave. So it could be up to two years from now. Uh, so yes, a lot of those people, but in the community, the word is getting out that if you're pregnant or you're planning to be pregnant, get on the wait list at the daycare so that when you do need care, the, the spot will be available. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to continue. I do appreciate the six areas of focus because I, I believe that that there are, uh, by breaking it down that way, you're, you're looking at uh, a variety of, of things to achieve a certain outcome. And, and I appreciate that that is uh, um, positive and that all these need to be considered at the same time. Um, I do want to make a comment, though, that um, in this report, um, I haven't seen anything that talks about the possibility of finding a new area for a daycare. For example, we have um, the opportunity to build a new affordable housing building. And we, of course, have no plans for that. But would we? Would it be advantageous for us to have a separate standalone daycare? And would that be something that, in our strategy, that we should be looking at in order to complement uh, the, the offering that we currently have? Uh, I'm thinking that that that, in addition to having a second facility one of these facilities could achieve weekend and longer hours, which um, is another area that I, I think, I, I don't know if we've explored that enough to be able to assist our workforce here. Um, and and I, would, I would like to see a little more work on that area of, of being open seven days a week. And I know you mentioned about staffing, but I do believe um, we should be looking at a seven-day week operation and, and plan for that in the longer term. But uh, let me allow you, um, uh, Ms. Daniel, to, to respond. Uh, Deputy Mayor Milnick, can you repeat the question? Was it about a new facility? Well, in our, it, I, I would suggest when in, if we're developing a strategy, we either need to expand the current daycare or potentially look for a new space. And and in that strategy, um, has that been considered? Okay, so in um, area focus number one, accessibility, we did uh, number two, uh, does say investigate creative uses of current spaces, including renovation costs. So that would be how we could renovate our current space or add on to it possibly to meet the needs of the community. We haven't uh, added a new build um, yet, but uh, that is an option we could definitely look into for the, if we were to rewrite this and bring it back. Um, also in number one, uh, engaged with community organizations to explore potential collaboration. One of the output items is to uh, explore community resources for possible satellite locations. So that could be a possible new facility in a current building in town. Thank you for that. So, so when we're talking about a strategy, that this might be important to, to put that maybe in a higher focus and, and um, what I perceive in here. Um, and, and again, secondly, the, the operation of seven day a week, while it's mentioned, um, I would think we could move to that if we could hire additional staff is what I perceive.
Uh, we definitely could look into uh, being open seven days a week if that was meeting the needs of the community. I think the first step is to find out what families need. So that would that was our first step in the in the action plan was to survey current parents, parents on the wait list, other community members to see what they needed for care. What if we opened 15 minutes earlier, if we opened an hour earlier, if we opened eight hours on the weekend, or do we need to be open 10 hours on the weekend? I think we kind of need to see what everybody's wants and needs are first before we kind of say, yeah, we could do this. So just we're about to move into 160 days of seven day a week, very busy in the service industry. Everyone is is looking for staff, and and I think if childcare is is what is one of those barriers, I think the municipality has a has an opportunity to assist by by being quite flexible to be open seven days a week, because the hospitality industry uh, tourism is not bound by Monday to Friday and eight a.m. to six p.m. The industry is seven days a week, 160 days full on. And, and I think we need to, in our strategy, think about how we can assist potentially our employers and, and their employees achieve um, more flexibility for their workers. And, and I think it, it, to go back and, and to, to be able to um, reassess the areas of focus with that mindset might offer some different alternatives. Councillor Demona. Yeah, you know, as, as we probe deeper into this and, and get a, a better understanding, we've got a higher list now than we ever have. And, um, you know, maybe the word is out that you need to get on earlier. And that's why we're seeing 20 or so more than average. I think I remember seeing 75 as a as an ongoing number, but even before that, um, it wasn't as high. And I'm just, I'm wondering, I just, I don't have access to the information, but um, you know, when we're going to build models and strategies and stuff like that, um, are we looking at like a, a population spike right now, like a baby boom because of COVID? And is this something that, you know, might be a, a factor, you know, younger people uh, needing um, this type of service in the community, right, and, and healthcare. So, you know, we build something for the next few years and, and our, our, you know, we I think there's there needs to be a little bit more analysis there too. I'm not sure what all the answers are and I don't think I'm asking for them, but um, could that be a, a factor as well? Uh, CEO, Mr. Gibbon. Thanks very much, W. Mayor Malik. Uh, just on that last point uh, that Councillor DeMoto raised, um, as I think about Jasper, and I'm happy to be corrected by you know, staff that work in the child care area, um, there are some limitations on the total population size. Um, and I think historically, I, I feel pretty comfortable saying that Jasper will always have a large pool of young in a, in, of young people in our workforce. So I think we are on, on an ongoing basis, and I, you know, just given the natural course of things, uh, I think that there's, you know, a lot of people that move here on their own, uh, and they don't leave here on their own. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, they meet somebody, that, and, and I think that that's just going to be a feature of Jasper's workforce on an ongoing basis. There may be ups and downs within that, but I think that that's going to be the features that people start out their careers here in a service sector job. Um, they they meet somebody, uh, they start their lives here, they maybe have children. Um, and they maybe stay and they maybe don't. And there's obviously a lot of challenges around that. But I, but I think that we're always uh, going to have new young workers coming in that eventually will be a little bit older young workers and may start to have families. So I don't think that there's any particular spikes uh, because you know Jasper doesn't have that ability to to, to peak to 7,000 people because there's, there are people here moving without jobs. I think that there's that continual churn within the labor force. Um, but I think they're always going to be younger workers that are at a certain point in their lives. Thank you for that. Um, Councilor Demona. Well, I'm, I'm glad these conversations about uh, time of day and, and um, accessibility um, 
to child care and, and early early learning um are coming out of conversation because you're right like for you know more than four or five months out of the year we're not nine to five where it's a 16 hour flux where most of the pressure is on the community to providing service to visitors um and you know i'm, I'm using that loosely starting at 6 a.m and going to 10 p.m at night time and you know the that's our biggest pressure and uh, i can't imagine that you know, most of the people in the community are needing that service between nine and five. So uh, definitely we're something exploring and, and um, assessing those needs and where we need it. Thank you for that. I'm sure Keller RP. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Yeah, I really like this conversation is going and I agree with you and Councillor Demota. Like I see it myself just in the industry that I'm in here that you know, we start at six in the morning and we go to 10 at night and a lot of our staff have had new babies and, you know, their shifts are all different there. And um, I think it's more, I'm kind of curious, what's the earliest age a child can go to daycare? <coughs> uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through to Councillor Keller, um, it really depends on what the daycare is licensed for. We could take an infant as young as a week old because uh, we have that license. The youngest we've ever had is seven weeks. And typically that's like a one-off. So it's usually around six, seven months would be the, the youngest. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillors, any other comments? Councillor Roxer. Uh, through you, Deputy Mayor Melnick, to administration. Uh, listening to this, the whole thing, it does seem to me like one of the biggest concerns is the ability to recruit sufficient staff. And I'm wondering if there has been any consideration to partnering with some of the uh, colleges in Alberta uh, who might who might be able to provide some staff staffing uh, through placement through their placement programs and whether, placement students are eligible to count in ratio. But I was thinking that the months that school is in might be the time when we have uh, availability within our uh, staff, it, within our housing situation, because it's usually from uh, September to, uh, to April. Uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through to Councillor Waxer. We currently have three practicum students uh, on staff already. However, those uh, three students were already our staff. So uh, they are doing their practicums while they're working. So it's definitely an option. Uh, we don't typically get interest from practicum students outside of kind of the Jasper, Hinton, Valmont area um, because of housing probably, but also um, a lot of people just do the practicum where they're going to school, so it's easier. Uh, and then we tend to get them for the summer uh, if they're going to go look for some place to work. So usually those students who are kind of between their level two and level three would come work for us for the summer months and then go back to, say, Edmonton or Calgary to finish their schooling there. Councillor Waxer? Uh, just wondering if we maybe made up a a package that would incent incentivize doing that if um uh, and making it yeah uh, just a really uh a really uh place that people really want to come um and because most like it might be just by happenstance in most circumstances but um it might be a look are you looking for an ex exciting opportunity to live in the mountains for a few months while you're a teacher. <laughs> um, something like that, that um, if we put some extra effort into uh, the, that recruitment, it may be an advantage because we, we are lucky to be in a beautiful place where some people might appreciate um, having doing their practicum and then maybe drawn back to coming back for the summer. Uh, Director Reed. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Worship. And, and uh, firstly, I'll thank Councillor Waxer and, and all of you for your great comments. We, we've got some great notes here. Um, I do want to highlight that 
Uh, certainly, Ms. Daniel and her staff are always doing uh, incremental increases, incremental improvements to recruitment or, um, uh, for example, um, Councillor Waxer spoke of a sort of a package to uh, incentivize or draw people. That is uh, already uh, a thing we do. Um, could we do better? And, and that's what I want to talk about. Just, just one comment is right now we do the best we can within the scope, budget, and authority, my favorite three words. And so right now, what Ms. Daniel does is when she's not on the floor, when she's not doing her manager job, she works at incremental improvements of our current system. This um, action plan before you, should you were uh, to adopt it, should you adopt it, would indicate then that we would bring you a budget request to support more than incremental changes to our current system. Um, and, and I want to sort of highlight that what we, we don't have the capacity in our system to implement any real change, like uh, even adding two hours to our day, let alone adding seven day a week. We don't have that capacity to create it, staff it and house it. However, should council, uh, I guess, adopt this as your action plan, then we would come to you and say it will cost you this much to actually action it. And that's, in, you know, in the financial section, that, that last sentence there. And I just want to highlight that, that uh, what we are doing is uh, the best we can within scope, budget, and authority. And I will tip my hat to Ms. Daniel and her team. They work incredibly hard to keep the staff that we do have. And you may remember in my report a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that that facility has yet to run as scheduled due to, you know, absences, illness, uh, child care needs, that sort of thing. Um, so we are not at a place where we can just tell you there's a magic wand waiting for you. Um, and I, I kind of want to just bring that to you, that this plan comes with, uh, you will see, in essence, a service profile with a, with a budget ask in the 2024 request for us to action anything more than the traditional and very successful model that we have now and the incremental increases that we can do every month and year. Um, and I, I, I felt that that moment right there was the overall moment to just bring us back to that sort of concept, if, if you will. Thank you, uh, Director Reed. Um, your version. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Um, through you to administration, I, I'm appreciative um, of Mr. Reed's comments because that, in fact, is my concern here that I, I voiced earlier. If council adopts this as a plan, um, then the plan is in seven specific instances in this document to increase the 2024 budget. Um, there is another one where it doesn't say budget increase, but it talks about increased program. Um, there is a reference to advocacy for external funding, which would be great. But once we adopt a plan, I think we have committed in some sense to, to some level of increased funding. What I still think is missing is a strategy that might say, this is our target. Um, we can get there either through increased budget allocations, or perhaps we can leverage the private sector or other levels of government. And, and that's the part of the strategy that I think we, we haven't developed. Um, I, I went back to the document from December and the final sentence of the final message from the authors um, after kind of going through the complexity of, of the entire situation in Jasper said any discussion should at a minimum focus on defining priorities and goals for child care in Jasper. So what is the goal? I mean, I appreciate the six components. They came out in the report, accountability, affordability, flexibility, inclusivity, um, quality and advocacy. But we haven't selected among those. We just said they're all principles. Don't know if they're all equal or not. And I don't know our target. So, for example, the same December meeting, 
we had a presentation from Tourism Jasper. And they provided us with a strategy. So they have four elements. Uh, it was it was simple. I should be able to remember engaging, you know, earning community trust, um, growing revenues, strengthening the brand, and elevating the destination. And then they had a target, which was 80% occupancy. That I can wrap my head around, but I don't see that here. So I, I see a plan to increase the budget, but what's our direction? What's our ultimate goal? Um, how will we know when we've got there? Uh, we can increase um, accessibility, um, impact affordability, do these other things, but what is the what is the goal? And the message from the authors was the first thing you have to do, the most important thing you have to do is to find your goals. I, I, I still struggle to understand exactly what our goals are, um, but you can assist me, I think. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Director Reed, uh, we can hope that I can assist, uh, but I will tell you that I'm nodding over here off camera because that's what I was, uh, I guess, trying to say at the beginning. We don't have all the answers. And so to get all of those answers, like you indicated, what is appropriate in our local community, we can, without any change to budget, keep chipping away and we do the little incremental changes that we do or we can action this plan and find out. Um, and I do see, uh, Mr. Ireland, your concern. And one of the things that uh, Ms. Daniel and I worked on was the language in this document. We didn't want it to be vague, uh, but yet it also, we don't actually know what partnership looks like because we haven't had the time, scope, budget, and authority to go through that whole exercise. Um, and I'm wondering, as we are sitting here in this wonderful discussion, if the action plan and the strategy are inexorably, oh, sorry, simple language, are absolutely tied together and they cannot go without each other. And that's, I think, where we are at. We need these action plans to be done for us to give you what the overall strategy in pieces looks like. When I talk an overarching thing like we will improve affordability, we know what we're aiming to do there. We're going to reduce the cost of attending childcare in our community. Uh, accessibility, same thing. Make it easier to find childcare in our community. Flexibility, make it easier to find the tourism needs uh, 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 to meet the tourism needs of our childcare. So we can define those. And that's what the six focus areas match or, or reflect. But I can't tell you exactly how many spots and which of them are pop up and which of them are evenings and weekends and which of them are done in concert with a partner and which of them are uh, grant funded and which of them are municipally funded. I can't do any of that because I just don't have that information. And so the action plan is intended to create. So one of the one of the bullet points in the action plan was uh, investigate, apply for grant opportunities and attain estimates for renovation costs of current facilities. So that's something we haven't done yet because we don't have the capacity to do that. And I may find out that there's no grant funding and the cost is too high. And so the answer might be we don't build new because it's just not feasible. And so some of those words like appropriate, um, uh, cost effective, all of those words aren't in here because I would have put them in in every section. But that's the kind of detail that we don't have today. I can't tell you, is it more cost effective to add space to the new housing that we will be building? Is it more cost effective to put a space in the, in that building? Or is it more cost effective to uh, add on to the multipurpose hall? I don't know what that answer is because we have not done that work. And I, I think I'll end there, but I hope that gives you some of the clarity as to the six focus areas are definitely what we're aiming towards but I don't exactly know what the meat and potatoes of any one of those looks like today. And without adopting a plan and then funding that plan to do that work, I couldn't give you those answers. Thank you, Director Reed. Uh, Councillor DeMoto. Well, <clears throat> we do have an action plan here and, and although semantically it doesn't say strategic plan or strategy in it, 
um, you know, part of the action plan in the wordage could say um, to develop a strategy to deliver all of these principles. And uh, that could encompass part of the plan. Because you, if you have a strat plan, that might not include the overall strategy. The plan could be to come up with a strategy. So um, I know that it kind of dances itself into a circle, but there are obviously some steps that we need to take forward. And I'm grateful that this is just like, um, you know, uh, administrations said, you know, like it, it's a building block that we can add to and uh, create into something that might be better for the community overall. Thank you, Councillor Demoter. Demoter, sorry. <laughs> that's a that's an appropriate Freudian slip there. There it is. And uh, I'll go to Councillor Keller MP. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. So if I'm understanding this right, so in order for us to move any of this forward, we have to move it to budget first in order for any of these action items even to start because we don't have capacity or funding right now to move any of this model forward for any more information. Am I correct? Sorry, to read. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through to Councillor Keller. I mean, excellent question. And the answer is, uh, let's say 85 or 90 percent, yes. But of course, there are. So when a grant comes up that says space creation, are we going to look at that? Of course we are. Um, so uh, we will still do. Uh, let's say 10 or 15 or 20 percent of these sorts of ideas because that's the best way we can serve our community within current scope budget authority to go over and above to create these new uh, initiatives and to really uh, di dive deep into partnerships you're right we would not be able to go deeper into that without more resources yeah so none of this work would then to wrap the budget of 2024 commence so 2025 so we'll be looking kind of 25 like um the year of 24 so if we were to create longer daycare we were kind of looking in 24 early 25 before our community would see benefit to extra daycare extra hours um CEO Mr. Gibbon Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Uh, so uh, um, the plan, uh, and actually the RFD uh, notes this uh, sort of in a small portion in the, in, that's there. The plan does have some items which have budget implications, uh, a number of them. Some of those budget implications are the general staff resources to it, or as Mayor Ireland was pointing out before, increased subsidy or increased funding to wildflowers. But not all of the items have those. Um, administrate, if Council thought these were the right actions and the right directions to be taking, that administration would incorporate those into our planning for the budget and what we would present to you. And so when we show up at, uh, budget, at budget this fall, we would say, these are the things we think we need to do, and here's what we think they will do, and in the same way that we you know, have to justify any budget. So um, Endorsement of the plan, uh, this plan or revised plan, is not approval of budget. You can only approve budget. Uh, sorry, our administration will only take budget approvals at budget, uh, unless, of course, council says this is so important. We want to dedicate reserves and modify an existing year's budget. So, Councilor Keller MP, we could do any of these things. Uh, council has the authority to say we want to spend money out of reserves to do something in the current budget year. Assuming that that isn't the direction that you're headed, then administration would be saying, um, okay, council has endorsed a plan, strategic or action, otherwise, uh, it has some things, what will it take to do those things, and how much will it cost to do those things, and then we would present that to you at budget. Um, so in terms of tangible changes to operating hours at wildflowers, not even there. Uh, I think as Ms. Daniel said before, first we'd like to actually ask people if we change the hours, would they use it? You know, it is sort of a, and, and really get a, a, a objective quantifiable number of how many hours will people pay to come? And then we would come to you and say, okay, in order to meet this demand that we can quantify, 
here's how many additional staff hours we would need to have. And that's a discussion we would have with you at budget time. Unless council will bring it to us next week. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Other counselors? Um, we have had a very robust discussion and, and I appreciate the comments um, by each uh, individual, Ms. Daniel, Director Reed, CEO Gibbon. Um, we have an outstanding daycare. And I just wanna make sure that we recognize that what we're doing is taking, looking at taking an outstanding daycare to a different level. And how do you go better than outstanding? Well, um, I think that's what the, this report um, is uh, trying to achieve. And I, I'm wondering, based on your comments, um, Mr. Gibbon, would there be an opportunity to come back prior to budget with maybe some indication of, you know, when we're looking at outcomes, and I, I don't want to, I know capacity and, and administration. Is there, do you think, an opportunity for us to have a better understanding of what the needs are in the community if we did some of that work prior to coming for a budget ask? Uh, I think that's the intention that's actually in in this in this plan. Uh, if if council saw that this was generally the right direction to be heading, um, and and endorsed a plan, I, I don't want to keep saying this plan, but it is the one that's in front of you, or one that council modifies or changes or you know directs back. But anyways, if council says this is the right direction to be heading, then we would start that work. Um, you know, the specifically the idea of serving current people on the wait list, current parents in the daycare and, and the broader community. I think that that's something that Ms. Daniel would have expected to do uh, in advance of budget. We wouldn't wait until budget to do that. We would do that in order to justify or demonstrate the demand to you at budget time. Right. So, so um, and there are a mix of those items, you know, so, I, so this isn't a, if council adopts it, it's not until we get more people and more money before we can do anything. There is stuff, as Director Reed said, that is within our scope budget authority that we would undertake uh, immediately, as long as we knew that we were headed in the right direction. And I think that's really what this is, is, is administration saying, here are some directions, strategic or otherwise, actions, but, but here are some directions that we think we need to go. Does council agree that those are the right directions? Are there directions that are missing, uh, need to be modified or contact? You know, and so that's the the hope of the discussion today. Um, so, if, if uh, Deputy Mayor Malnick, if you're looking to say, is there a, is there some sort of interim direction that can, council could give administration? I think it really is probably more, or is there other preparatory work that administration could do? I think maybe the the best way would be. Uh, if there are some specific things that council would like to highlight by motion, that would be great. Um, or if council uh, would like administration to take another stab at refining this document uh, to incorporate some of what we've heard, that's a little bit more challenging than those specifics. But at the same time, I know that Ms. Daniel, Director Reed, myself will all be taking notes about the discussion. And so if council wanted to refer this back to administration, for revisions based on the conversation today, uh, I think that that's a motion that administration would work with. Uh, and we can come back to you with a revised document see if it sort of can, can meet the needs a little bit more specifically. Thank you for that. I uh, appreciate the commentary. Um, Councillors, any other discussion? Uh, Councillor DeModa. Well, just to make a comment here, you know what, I appreciate uh, the info that we have in front of us. and. Um, you know, maybe administration, there a lot of people are, are doing this five, six, seven days a week, sometimes depending on, you know, what your position is. We got this on Friday, right? And there's a bunch of other stuff attached to this agenda as well, and lots of stuff to read and contemplate. And, and we're going to be making some, you know, big decisions and sure there's stuff we can move forward on. Um, I'd like to stew on this a little bit more personally. Um, I don't have any sense of 
what kind of direction I'm capable of giving right now. Maybe collectively we can come up with something or somebody has an idea. Um, I'm more at ease myself because, again, I'm using the term magnitude of um, what's in front of us. That, uh, I'm willing to accept it as information for now. Um, if anybody else wants to give some direction or get some more details on specifically what we need, I, I would like to see this before us again um, after some time to absorb what we talked about today. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Demona. Any other Councillor comments? Seeing none, I would suggest we need a direction to be given to administration uh, so that we can move forward. Uh, and I appreciate the amount of detail correct in, in this particular um, request for decision. It's a lot of things to consider. Uh, is there a counselor who is willing to present a motion. Councillor Demona, perhaps we uh, can recess for 10 minutes or something, and then if somebody wants to come up with something, they have time, or because they'll have more time, then it could be a good idea. And typically, we do a recess at around this time. I would be happy to have a 10 minute recess, seven minute recess, come back at 10 55. Um, and I think that'll help us move this along. Thank you. We are in recess for seven minutes. Thank you, counselors and administration. We are back in regular session. We are at agenda item 7.1, and we had a, a great robust discussion um, on the request that was presented before us. Um, counselors, uh, I hesitate to ask if there's any other discussion, or is there a counselor um, who will propose a motion? Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. No, I, I will propose um, a motion, but before I make the motion, I will propose the motion to see whether it would be sufficient from an administrative perspective. And my intended motion then would be that committee direct administration to return with a revised document which reflects today's discussion particularly focused on the strategic element. Is that sufficiently clear? I get a nod um, and so Ms. Acorn, were you able to record that? So that is my motion. Thank you for that, Your Worship. Is there any discussion on the motion? Councillor Demona. With that motion reading after document in brackets, the early Early Learning and Child Care Action Plan. And that's what yeah. yeah, that's a friendly amendment. Good. Sure. The, um, I will, uh, if there's no other discussion, looking to the screen, um, Your Worship. If I could just speak, speak briefly to the motion. Um, I say it with the greatest of respect to administration, and it's not um, focused at all on the quality of 
the plan that has been presented or the RFD. This is simply to address something that I consider as a really helpful and necessary step as we move forward, which is a focus on the strategy um, and then the, the plan will follow the strategy. So um, no disrespect at all intended toward staff by not following the recommendation and asking for um, a return with the with revisions to the document. Thank you for that. Councillors, we have the motion in front of us. I will call the question. All those in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Daniel. Um, Councillor Keller Hampi. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, no, no, Nick. Um, just on the discussion of how important it is for our industry um, for um, daycare, I was wondering if there was an interest of council if I made a motion for committee to direct administration to determine the need for seven day a week uh, daycare and some extended hours, that report could come back a little earlier also. That would kind of help council to assess the need in our community and understand it better. Thank you, Councillor Keller MP. Administration, um, any comments? Uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, through to Councilor Keller, I this is absolutely something we can do. Um, and uh, no, we absolutely can do, and we can bring it back together if, if that's what Council wishes. Thank you, Director Reed. That'd be great. Councillor, you have a motion. Yes. Um, committee direct administration to determine the need for seven days a week and extended hours uh, for our Jasper community. So we have a motion on the floor. Any discussion? Uh, Mayor Ireland. It should be debate, um, and unfortunately, it's it's not. Um, the motion itself is silent as to a return date, so just return with that information. I presume that leaves it open, but I did hear from the administration director Reed that potentially at the same time, and I I wouldn't necessarily require that myself. I, would, I, I appreciate that it is tasking administration with work that is not in a work plan now and. We know that there are always capacity issues. So I I think the two could be dealt with separately. So come back with uh, first motion that was passed with respect to the revised document when you are able and come back with this one when you are able, despite the fact that you offered to conjoin them if that's not practical. I don't think it's part of the motion, so not required. Uh, Director Reed. Well, uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor Monik, uh, through to your worship and Councillor uh, Keller Ambi. Uh, I was only offering it, not sort of demanding it. And in fact, uh, separating them is probably better for clarity. So your your wisdom is, of course, known. Thank you. Um, is there any debate? There being none, we have a motion on the floor. I'll call the question. All those in favor? And that is carried. And uh, thank you to administration. Thank you to Ms. Daniel um, in the preparation of this document. And uh, look forward to the return to council. We are now moving to agenda item 7.2, um, paid parking. And I'm just going to check my screen as it goes in here. Give me a moment. There we go. And this is being presented by uh, 
Is Council Stage Director Nadon on the there she is. Over. Good Council morning, Nadon. Deputy Mayor Melnick, Council. Um, I'm here to present the paid parking information as presented in the agenda, and you will see that the recommendation for the report is to uh, receive the report for information. We've uh, provided a bit of background on what decisions were made so far in 2023 for paid parking, so you'll see those uh, itemized under background. And um, we are here today to present the updated information, but also to address uh, some motions from the motion action list, uh, namely that uh, administration modify the resident permit program to a one-time registration process and uh, develop a bulk purchasing program for hotels with limited on-site parking. We have been uh, working on these items and progressing steadily. Uh, the launch date for paid parking is fast approaching, as you know, starting May 1st. Operations is um, all lined up and has signage ordered for new areas and has been in installing posts and um, focusing on uh, reestablishing the existing zones from last year first. And then we'll move on to uh, adding the additional zones. We do uh, think we will be able to meet the target of making them all happen at the same time, but that's how they will be prioritized in relation to May 1st. And um, specifically around the resident parking program, um, all permit holders from 2022 will be renewed automatically and will receive an email from Hotspot indicating as much. So if you've registered last year, we have your email on file and uh, Hotspot has the ability to just reactivate them. And um, we are going with a no on-street action required program this year. So that means once your vehicle is registered, you can just park in the paid parking zone as long as you follow uh, the maximum time limits. So two hours on street, uh, 12 hours in parking lots is the general rule there. And something worth highlighting is that um, administratively, we've determined that uh, the south side of Connaught Drive, so the part that is immediately by the train tracks, uh, there is no business frontage there. So we've turned that into, or we will be turning that into starting May 1st, uh, a 12 hour zone as well. So that will no longer be two hours only, which means uh, people who are going downtown to go to a restaurant or do some shopping will be able to park there as long as they would in the parking lot. And our rationale there was that there is no business frontage. So anything that's in front of businesses will remain two hour parking. And uh, Geeky Street and the south side of Connaught will become 12 hour parking. Um, residents who may not have applied for a, a permit last year or residents that are new to Jasper will be able to register online using the same process. So essentially uploading a picture of your vehicle registration and a proof of residency in Jasper, which for most people will be uh, Jasper National Park Pass. So that's simple. You should have those in your vehicle already. You just take a picture and upload them on hotspot. And uh, residents who live in uh, the paid parking zone or in the, in the resident only resident parking only zones uh, do need to provide a proof of residency showing a street address so they can access visitor passes. So if you have house guests or PHA guests and you live in one of those zones, uh, that is the same program as last year, but the requirements are slightly different. And then as for the uh, bulk purchasing program for hotels, we've been working with Hotspot and with our previous um, businesses that participated in the program last year. And that program is going to run essentially the same. So um, hotels can register directly with Hotspot. So we have a contact person there. So Director Malinchak and myself have been uh, funneling requests that way. And um, the rate for this year will be maintained as the same as last year. So for $10 a day, uh, hotels can park their guests in anywhere but the two hour parking areas uh, from the moment they check in until the next day at 11 a.m. And everything happens at the front desk of the hotel. So when the guests are registering, the hotel front desk person can input the license plate and the information for the guests immediately. So it is in real time, it facilitates enforcement on our end and it keeps things uh, relatively straightforward. We've added a bit of information about uh, our three new payment kiosks, which are on the way. Um, we are experiencing some uh, supply chain issues there, but we do anticipate they will be in Jasper in the very, in early May. Um, those have been on order since January. They just need to be programmed and delivered to Jasper. So we are expecting three new kiosks and the locations that we've um, identified for those to try to cover the area as best as we can 
is um, in the parking lot on Connaught Drive near Pyramid Lake Road. So that was one of our uh, highest occupation parking lots in 2022. So it made sense to put one there. We will place one near the information center on Connaught Drive to service that section of the streets, as well as uh, the 600 block of Patricia is also a high demand area. And um, so we've been working with operations to ensure that we place those on municipal land. So we have very wide sidewalks in those areas. So that's where the kiosks will go. And um, communications with the public are unfolding. So like I said, um, all the permit holders from 2022 will receive an email directly from Hotspot. So that's the best way to make sure everyone knows whether they're registered or not. Our website is currently up to date and we are uh, launching social media and newspaper campaigns shortly. And um, I guess the only last part to highlight is that uh, we have a budgeted revenue for paid parking at $675,000 for 2023. We do anticipate that with uh, starting right at May 1st with our signage and be able to start collecting revenue and barring any unforeseen circumstances in the summer of 2023, we should be able to meet that target. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Director Nadon. Are there any questions from counselors? Councilor Wilson. Uh, just for clarification, that you may have said it, but uh, the cannot um, uh, south side of cannot from Hazel to 700 block. Um, last year was that. Uh, uh, two hour paid parking or was that just on uh, that was just free parking last year if you mayor melnick through to councillor wilson um yes so now this uh with the new changes approved by council this year it starts at the 200 block of cannot going all the way to the commercial portions of the 700 block and um that was two hour paid parking last year. So it was paid parking. We're simply extending the time frame that people can park to give them a bit of a chance to uh, do whatever they need to do downtown and whatever the reasons are that they're parking there. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Director Nadon. Uh, Mayor Ireland. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Milnick. Uh, through you to Mr. Doyle, just two really simple questions. Um, firstly, with respect to, to rollover, so residents were registered last year it, that will be renewed this year, as I understand. The, the line in the RFD um, mentions a vehicle, but it's it's just the plate, isn't it, um, that is registered. So you register your plate number. So if, if for example, you change vehicles, um, you don't need a bin or anything like that, do you? Thank you for the question, Mayor Ireland. You are correct that um, the permits are based on license plates. So if you got a new vehicle, but you reused your existing license plate, you should update your make and model probably in hotspot, but the, the plate itself will, will return as having a permit. But if you have a new vehicle with a different plate, you are correct that you would need to register again. Thank you for that. And the second question, again, um, easy for you, but unknown to me. The, the kiosks that are going to be installed, I presume they need some sort of internet access. Um, I just recently stopped in Canmore and had to use such a thing. And I, I have no idea how that is configured, but I know that we have been talking about internet accessibility um, throughout the town. How are these things configured to, to have the necessary internet access? I mean, not technically, but do, do, we, do they operate independently? I, I don't need to know all the, the details, but do they need a signal coming from elsewhere? Are they, how, how does it work? <laughs> yes, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick through to Mayor Ireland. So the kiosks are solar powered and they work off of cell phone data. So they are completely uh, independent as a unit. So they don't require power or internet access. They just get electric energy from the sun and 
connect wirelessly through the cell network. So there are some limitations on placement, uh, namely in relation to the solar panels. So we need to make sure that the orientation of the kiosks uh, align so that they are powered sufficiently to run through an entire day, but uh, they are fully independent devices. Thank you. Any other councillor comments? I'm looking for councillor Waxer if she's on. I don't see her on the screen. Councillor Demoda. Yep. You're muted, uh, councillor Waxer. You're uh, you're muted yourself. I apologize. I turned it off. Turned off the camera while Director Nadone was speaking. <laughs> Oh, well, I was a big supporter of uh, getting the McCready lot, uh, you know, for residents, for resident use. And not that, you know, I want to get my way or, or prove a point. I, I think that um, I was just wondering if there could be any focused advertising into letting the broader community, we're getting new people coming to the community uh, that weren't here over the winter time. Uh, that might not know of uh, a lot of things. And um, just for the sake of not competing with uh, visitor spots in the other parking lots, because residents can go and park there all day if they want to, right? And because we've got the, you know, the one-time registration, I was just thinking, um, so that there's probably less stress in those areas to, to maybe promote the, the McCready lot as a first use for, you know, we're going to have two-hour limits in town for everyone. Uh, so if people need to go into uh, the downtown core for whatever uses, maybe even work, that uh, you know we we promote that. And I, you know, I don't want to feel like I'm individually giving um, administration that direction. But I was just curious to see how the rest of you felt on that. Thank you, Councillor Demoden. Um, any comments? to Councillor Demoda's comments. Well, if I may then, uh, through you, um, Deputy Mayor Melnick, to uh, Director Nadal, do, do you feel uh, that that's something that could be pursued or should be um, based on the comments I just made? Do I turn it on? Deputy Mayor Melnick through to Councillor Demota. Um, th thank you for raising that item specifically. Um, we are uh, in the process of finalizing a new map for um, our communications in 2023, which is uh, quite a bit more detailed. So we've been working with our GIS uh, staff member who is a shared position with Parks Canada. And for example, we will be showing all of the accessible parking stalls and more detail around the different zones and the different times that you can park. And certainly uh, the McCready Centre parking lot being displayed as a resident only area will, I think, uh, convey that message or that's a change from 2022 that we need to focus on. And um, we are trying to get the information out on the existing pieces of the program is sort of how our plan is going, both operationally and from a communications perspective. And then adding on the other pieces that are new. So for example, that parking lot, but also uh, one of the things that's sort of in the second tier of, of launching in our communications is for example, a merchant validation process. So where uh, businesses who are not necessarily hotels would be able to offer complimentary parking or just to pick up the tab for the parking of their uh, clients, whether they be a, we're told by Hotspot that hairdressers seem to use that service quite a bit versus a retail situation where people are in and out a bit more quickly. But essentially all that to say that um, we are quite focused on getting our initial set of communications uh, up to date and out to the community on time for May 1st, and that uh, subsequent rounds of communications items can focus on some of those new parts and uh, note taken that the McCready parking lot should be one of those. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, and I'm, I'm satisfied with that. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other discussion by council? There being none, we have a recommendation that the committee receive this report for information. Is there a council, councillor Demoda? 
Yes, the motor was idling, but I turned it off because you're not allowed to do that. So start it up again and I'll make that motion. Thank you, Councillor DeMoto. Any other discussion on the motion? There being none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? And that is carried. Item 7.3. We are looking at the e-bike sharing pilot project. And uh, we did have Director Greathead in the room, but I believe Mr. Gibbon is going to present this to us. Yes, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, uh, Director Greathead, and uh, Director Malich have both reviewed this report before coming to Council, but I'm going to be the one presenting it. Um, so the recommendation here in the request from the administration is essentially to uh, gain Council support to pause the development of the e-bike sharing program and refer the matter to the 2024 budget discussions. Uh, Council uh, in February received the uh, transportation strategy and action plan around uh, public transportation alternatives and options. Uh, committee directed administration at that time to begin the next steps towards establishing a fixed group bus service beginning in 2023 and conducting e-bike sharing pilot project in 2023. And so that's, uh, we're going to focus in this report on the e-bike sharing this administration has had some opportunity to undertake some work on that item. And that leads to the recommendation that we pause uh, until uh, 2024. Uh, administration, just for your knowledge on the other portion, administration has issued a public RFP for uh, transit service. That RFP closed on April 14th. The administration is currently reviewing the submissions uh, and working with the proponents um, and following up on that. Um, so the discussion of this report is on that one half of the motion on e-bike sharing, uh, but there is additional information coming to Council on the public transportation. We expect to bring that to you at the next committee the whole meeting. Um, the public transportation strategy and action plan did find that e-bike sharing would be an attractive option to both locals and visitors, um, and recommended that uh, the municipality should work with local partners to explore e-bike sharing of rental stations, and that that service could be open in the second and third quarters of each year. In order to gain a better understanding of what that could look like, administration has been in discussion with some e-bike uh, solution providers um, and has identified that there are, of course, solutions in the market that can meet Jasper's needs. Uh, we looked at, uh, conceptually, uh, a fleet of a pilot structured around a fleet of 24 e-bikes with two solar charging stations, which would essentially create a point-to-point uh, -point experience for visitors. Uh, we've discussed with Parks Canada the potential to locate one of those points at one of the campsites uh, and then locate the other one in the town site. So essentially drawing visitors in, uh, leaving, encouraging them to leave their vehicles at the campsite and then coming into the town site and then returning uh, on the e-bikes. Um, so in terms of order of magnitude, that type of installation uh, would likely uh, result in a cost of approximately $220,000 over the course of 24 months, um, or about $9,200 per month, uh, sort of amortized over that period. Um, so administration did that work. Uh, this is not a budgeted amount for 2023. Um, and so uh, if we were going to proceed, then council would need to uh, direct administration to do so and to identify a funding source. You'll see in the financial section of the report, uh, a potential funding source could be the public transportation and parking reserve, which is appropriate for this use. Uh, that reserve had a 2022 year end balance of just over $450,000. But to be clear, administration isn't recommending that here today. Um, the reasons that administration believes that uh, this should be paused. Uh, are essentially uh, five of them. Uh, first, as I mentioned, uh, these costs aren't budgeted. Uh, with additional lead time, the administration would have the ability to work to potentially secure sponsorships, uh, advertising revenue, uh, or other revenues to help offset some of those costs. And we'd like an opportunity to do that with community partners to see what's possible before uh, the municipality just accepting the full costs. Uh, there are also a number of different e-bikes out in the market and uh, administration believes that those different options should be evaluated 
uh, and that uh, is referenced also in procurement uh, administration, uh, looking at the marketplace that's out there, the different providers that are there and the variety of options. Really, that starts to tell us that in order to get best value and best quality, uh, the municipality should probably do a public procurement process rather than uh, and especially considering the scale of the, the pilot. Um, that public RFP process would require time for administration to develop the RFP, uh, to allow posting of the RFP, and then to evaluate the resulting submissions, and then to engage in a contract. And you can see how all of those things together really mean that even if we started now, we would likely miss the vast majority of this visitor season. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it would allow us to you know, evaluate different options and to allow the market to come forward with different ideas. Um, Another factor is the trail network from the campsites into the town site. Um, the strategy that council adopted back in February identified this as a as an area of improvement. Obviously, we're not in control of those uh, those corridors or those trails. Uh, the administration has had some discussions with Parks Canada, and they uh, acknowledge the need and have a, you know, a a desire to move forward to improving those transportation corridors or the trails into town, um, but they need to be able to fit that into their overall sort of year startup mm -hmm. plan and some advance notice could help them do that as well. Uh, and then finally, and this is really the, the largest driving factor is just administrative capacity. Uh, as I mentioned, we have issued the RFP, we're evaluating, um, and I expect that the startup of this new system, um, working with all the different potential partners and the service provider to start up any kind of transit service, uh, will likely be fairly administratively intense over the next three to six months as we really get that service off the ground. Um, and given the profile of the service and its importance to the community, and in particular, uh, the school community uh, for the student service in the fall, uh, administration recommends that that should be the focus of 2023 and that the e-bike uh, focus could fall. So for all of those reasons in the report, administration is recommending that council direct administration to pause development of the bike sharing program and refer the matter to the 2024 budget discussions. Uh, and at that time, we'd be able to uh, come to you with a recommendation on what could or should be budgeted for 2024, uh, appropriate funding sources. Um, and that would allow, the 2024 start would allow us to hit the ground running in January of 2024, which would allow more lead time for a number of these things that the administration has identified need to happen. Uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, I'm happy to answer any questions about the report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gibbon. Are there any questions for Mr. Gibbon or any comments on the um, recommendation uh, for this request for decision? Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Two things. Uh, firstly, I just want to extend appreciation to um, administration for the quality of this report. It was one of the, the clearest um, documents I have read. It covered all of the, the issues, explained them perfectly well. I am particularly um, attracted to the to the argument under procurement. I, I think that makes eminent good sense that we we test drive the bikes before we buy them. Um, seems like a good idea to me, um, but the rest of the, the other reasons are equally valid. So. I just wanted to express appreciation and um, indicate my support. But secondly, because I said there were two matters, um, I seek your permission as chair to absent myself to deal with a business matter, if I may be excused for a moment. Absolutely. Councillor Councillor DeMoto. Well, I definitely like the uh, the test drive uh, aspect of things that um, much like we see up at, uh, you know, our local ski hill, uh, they have demo days a couple of times a year where uh, different companies come in and they set up their tents and, you know, assign waiver and off you go with uh, their equipment, whether you're test driving skis or snowboard or um, other mountain uses. So if there's an opportunity to do that in our community, I'd, I'd sure like to, to see that roll out. I think it might be something exciting for community members and or administration exclusively. But um, I think that there's a lot of options out there and um, to get some Jasper 
uh, appropriate uh, format, I think would be great. You know, whether that means like one type or several types. Like to see scooters as well down the road, but you never know. Thank you, Councillor Devoted, Councillor Keller MP. Thank you, Dr. Hamill. Uh, I also um, agree with um, putting it on post. Also, you know, we have a lot of providers in town too that does e bikes. And I do know two of them offer to take the e bikes out to the campground um, to deliver to guests. So I think, you know, Nina, I think having the local providers, they may be interested in also developing the program with the new Valley. Thank you, Councillor Keller, MP, uh, CEO, Mr. Gibbons. Yeah, Deputy Mayor Malik, I'm glad that uh, Councillor Keller, MP, raised that because it isn't something that shows the board because it's a few steps away. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it is important to know, given that there are so many people that are involved in, in this area and we have bike shops in town, and, and to really understand, uh, you know, uh, what the impact would be on them is, is an important consideration. I'm happy to get that out there early. Um, mm -hmm. Administration has looked at models in other communities that are tourism based like ours. Um, and often the municipal bike sharing systems are set up with a uh, a free service that supports point to point transportation, but not touring. And so and this is very high order sort of in that, if you will. Um, but administration would likely recommend a program that had a very low or no cost for a certain period of time that would allow a visitor to get from the campsite into the town site. And that any time beyond that would actually be priced in such a way that it would discourage use of the municipal e-bike program and encourage use of private providers. If you want to go traveling around and checking out Jasper on a bike, there's lots of people today that do that. And administration uh, knows that we need to support that rather than to substitute it with a municipal service. So the goal here would be to focus uh, visitors on getting from the campsites to the town site and then actually encouraging them and supporting them and finding other ways with the private market. Um, and we can do that both through the pricing structure, um, basically making it kind of cost prohibitive to tour around on one of these bikes so that you have better options, probably have better bikes. With the private market um, and by ensuring that there's advertising available um, at our kiosk stations where the bikes would be parked that say hey if you enjoy this experience why don't you go and check out these providers in town of, of e-bikes for touring so we we had considered that again that's getting a little bit sort of into the nitty-gritty but it's something that we foresaw uh, the other area that we see an opportunity to partner with local providers Again, this is something that we could probably do under a procurement process, would be in terms of maintenance of the bikes and regular safety checks. Uh, the bikes on a regular basis would need to be inspected uh, and maybe some repairs made. Uh, that's something that we see a potential to partner with a local business or businesses. And administration would probably put out some kind of request for proposals for that, uh, that seasonal service where, again, conceptually, we could have somebody local on retainer to manage maintenance and inspections of the bikes on some kind of regular frequency. So there are definitely ways to support local business, both people that rent bikes uh, and the bike shops in town, even if the municipality comes in with this other type of system that really is a public transportation system. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Councillor Waxer. As it turns out, I don't actually have a question because the uh, uh, CAO Given was so uh, thorough in his answer. He answered both of my questions and the, uh, one of which was, do we have capacity to uh, maintain the bicycles once they, once we they're in our ownership? And also the question of, of how do we differentiate between what we would be offering versus what the private sector is offering. So thank you for your very comprehensive answer. Thank you, Councillor Waxer. Councillor Demona. Well, I like that peripheral check there. You didn't even glance over at me. Um, you know what, as much as I, I'm, I'm a big fan of testing bikes out and stuff, maybe from a, from a within town site perspective, like a local initiative, um, you know, when you when you bring in the campgrounds and um, external areas like that, you know, I just for me, I just 
although it's out of my scope, um, you know, you bring in safety like helmets and all this other type of use and, and crossing the highways and all that. And I know that's covered in, um, you know, the, the recognition here within the uh, information we have, but it's just uh, to me to, as a municipality to, to go that far, uh, I think that it seems like a daunting task, but uh, I'm interested to see what's out there. If it's, a, if it's definitely profitable, or at least um, the demands there. I mean, the private sector would be on it already, right? Thank you, Councillor Demoto. Any other comments by other councillors? Um, seeing none, I will probably weigh in here with my own comments. Um, the, the budget of $220,000 over two years um, uh, raised my eyebrows. Um, and I, I see that we, uh, with this particular request for proposals, and we'll defer looking at this until 2024. And I appreciate the comments of working with local bike providers, uh, local bike shops to partner in the e-bike sharing program. But I would like to investigate in supporting an e-bike program within the municipality and, and what would it take for us to have a subsidy for residents to be able to apply for a credit uh, up to a certain dollar amount um, to purchase their own e-bike. It would, it would serve along the same lines of reducing the amount of traffic downtown. Uh, and it would also probably encourage individuals to get out more um, and I'm wondering if there's any appetite among council for administration to investigate that for 2024 before we make a motion. Councillor Waxer. I'm just drawing on my uh, time living for a period being in Montreal where I, I saw that there were uh charging stations in residential areas and i wonder if that would be a way to overcome that by having at the east and west ends of town people could pick up a bike at downtown and head and uh, park it at home snap it in and then park it back down or go the next day into town so it's available in a variety of places Thank you for that. Um, any other comments? There being none, um, I would look for a motion to uh, Councilor Wilson. Yeah, I, I would uh, make the recommended motion that uh, <clears throat> Committee Direct Administration to pause development of the e-bike sharing program and refer the matter to the 2024 budget discussion. Thank you for that. Any other discussion? There being none, I'll call a question. All those in favor? And that is carried. We now move on to item 7.4, Communities in Bloom, Terms of Reference. And I refer to CAO Mr. Gibbon. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor Malnock. Uh, on the motion action list, this had uh, Director Greenhead's name beside it, uh, but he and I collaborated on this, and he uh, had uh, some folks from Atco come into town today that he needed to be with. So I'm going to handle the day on this one. Uh, so uh, administration is here uh, with a recommendation for committee uh, that you uh, recommend to council to approve the attached Communities in Bloom terms of reference. Uh, as presented. Uh, alternatively, of course, if there are adjustments to be made, you can make them here today and record it, recommend it for it as amended, um, or you could refer the matter back to administration for further review, um, or admin could direct administration to pause work on communities of blue uh, and receive the report for information. So uh, I won't go into the background in great detail. I know we've been at the table a few times with communities in bloom discussion. Um, but back in October of last year, committee directed administration to develop a terms of reference for the committee. Um, we did return in April 
uh, presenting a verbal update. And I think at that time, the council received that information and direct administration continue to explore options with community partners uh, for running the community's blue program. Uh, also at that same meeting, council uh, direct administration to support the Uplift Mural Festival, uh, which included reallocating the 2023 funds that were budgeted for communities in Bloom. So I just want to make sure that we point that out, that uh, those funds uh, have been reallocated in line with that council direction. So there aren't any actual funds available in 2023 um, existing within the operational budget without any other amendment. So uh, the challenge that administration has seen is that uh, historically, Communities of Bloom has been uh, more of a community-led effort, uh, but there hasn't been a significant amount of clarity in terms of who's responsible for what, and there hasn't been a lot of form to the committee. Um, our understanding is that Communities of Bloom um, does need formal endorsement by the Council of the Municipality uh, in order to exist, and so uh, we can't rely on the community to go and do Communities of Bloom. Municipal Council actually needs to say, yes, we are going to do communities in blue uh, by a formal resolution. Uh, administration's advice is if Municipality of Jasper is going to do communities in bloom uh, and Council is going to endorse that, then Council should provide some structure by adopting in terms of reference. Uh, administration has developed draft terms of reference for your consideration here. Uh, in terms of the purpose of the committee, and that's sort of the core area that I think we'd like to ask you to focus on. Um, administration is recommending that the, the purpose, uh, the council could define the purpose of Communities in Bloom Committee as uh, advisory to council, um, and so not uh, empowering it with any decision-making authority, um, but intending to engage the community in contributing their ideas and expertise to help inform administration's long and short-term business planning, uh, and then also to assist in determining appropriate goals and objectives with respect to beautification and environmental initiatives. Uh, the committee could assist in the identification of the strengths and weaknesses of our current initiatives. Uh, they can help, uh, I think, having it in, in and of itself and engaging the community that way would encourage positive relationships within the community. Um, and help provide in, uh, engage people in providing input into the marketing, education, promotion of our education and, and environmental initiatives. Uh, and then it'll also engage more of the community members and help them keep informed of special events, uh, promotions of public campaigns that the municipality has underway. So we are seeking your feedback on the attached draft terms of reference. Um, if there are other purposes or responsibilities that you'd like to identify uh, for the a potential committee. We could highlight those uh, in section one. Um, under membership, administration is recommending that should be a mixture of council members and public members uh, so that there is that link to council um, and so that there's a, a council member or council members that are that are participating with the committee. Um, and uh, following publishing of the agenda, there was an obvious inclusion that uh, that we missed and I would suggest that it's something that should be amended um, under membership. I think it would be wise to include uh, a position or positions for Parks Canada uh, given that there's such close interaction between the municipality and parks uh, and sort of an overlapping area of responsibility and again remembering that this committee doesn't have decision-making authority it is intended to have just to really um, support collaboration and, and coordination. Um, but Parks Canada could be a potential named organization that could have positions. Uh, and Tourism Jasper, uh, similarly, could be a named organization that could have a position on there, um, but for consideration. Um, the rest of the terms of reference are pretty basic, discusses how the committee is going to make decisions. Um, and uh, identifies that it is not a decision-making body, suggests that the committee would meet two times per year, uh, so in terms of what is the time commitment for anybody appointed to this, um, and speaks to where uh, the committee will be supported from, and that would be from the operations department and or the community development department, recognizing they both sort of uh, um, interact with these types of public engagement, uh, public promotion, and the services that are delivered. Um, Deputy Mayor Melnick, Councillor Councillor uh, Waxer mentioned before that I gave given a fulsome answer to something. I think she meant to say that I was long winded, uh, so I'm going to pause there and ask if Council has any questions or input on the terms of reference. 
Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Kibben. Um, if in her comments it wasn't direct, it was maybe implied to your point. Um, I, councillors, any comments or any discussion on the um, item before us, communities in bloom? Councillor Roxer. I'd like to reassure you that uh, it was only meant to be complimentary and my comments were only meant to be complimentary in nature. And again, they'll be complimentary in nature again because I really like this document. I think it gives some structure to the organization, to the uh, committee. It, it gives clarity as to the, uh, the role of the council and of the municipality and the municipal uh, administration. I also would support the inclusion of invitations to Parks Canada and Tourism Jasper, potentially also the chamber. Um, and uh, I just wanted to express my appreciation for this work and felt that it was um, fulsome and uh, comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Waxer, and I did note your inclusion of uh, the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce as another potential member for the public members. Other councillors, any comment? Your Worship. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick, and I, I note the hour at which I begin. Um, <laughs> and I know you have a desire to get out of here by lunchtime. I do have a number of, I hope, brief comments. Um, firstly, under purpose and responsibilities, um, the sort of the second sub bullet part, um, there just seems to be words missing. But my question to Mr. Gibbon is whether that would, that's intended to be restricted to identification of strengths and weaknesses of municipal beautification and environmental initiatives or um, would it would it include um, Parks Canada initiatives or third party initiatives so I think the, the committee ought to be guided somewhat in who it's evaluating in that sense particularly when it comes to strengths and, and weaknesses um, I just leave that with you I would like to see under purpose a more um, direct statement that one of the purposes is to foster community pride and, and engagement in individual efforts to, to maintain the appearance of our community. With respect to the, the membership question, and I, I appreciate that um, administration has probably considered this, but I wonder whether there is um, more value or is there not more value in having the committee more of a staff-led committee than a council-led, and I, I see it similar to the traffic advisory committee, which which deals with more operational matters without counselors present. And from my experience with communities in Bloom, it is operationally focused. Um, and I, I just wonder whether there might be an approach that emphasizes um, staff members and public members engaging more on an operational level um, rather than with counselors and that would um, remove the later um, requirement that all meetings be in camera. I, I think we want to engage the public as much as we can in efforts, collaborative efforts to improve the appearance of the town. So I just leave that as a bit of an open question. And finally, I wonder whether there is need in the terms of reference to identify um, funding support. So there is a, an indication of administrative support. Um, 
we previously had about $7,500 in the budget, and we can always do that, but I wondered whether in terms of reference, it might be documented that um, funding for the operation of the, um, the committee will be determined um, in the annual budget process or something like that. Because in, in past years, I know there has been um, an expense allocation for trips to the national conference and there are ongoing, um, all the minor, but ongoing expenses associated with the operation of that committee. So I, I'm just curious as to whether it's been considered, whether there'd be a funding provision included in the terms of the preference. And I got through all of that in less than five minutes. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, Mr. Gibbon, did you wish to respond? Uh, Deputy Mayor Alex, so no, I, I uh, noted those proposed changes and I can repeat them back uh, later on when maybe we're summarizing what administration has heard for changes. Um, the one, uh, two that I'll just speak to specifically to get a little bit more clarity under the purpose, uh, Mayor Ireland, you pointed out uh, assisting the identification of strengths and weaknesses uh, and then that there's sort of lack of definition of what we mean. Yeah. I guess the question is, is it specific to municipal beautification environmental initiatives or is it uh, intended to be more broad as in local, which could include environmental and beautification initiatives of other parties? And, you know, we certainly don't have the committee would only be um, uh, advisory in nature. Um, and so I think having it fairly broad is probably okay. The committee could identify things that are outside of our jurisdiction or outside of our area of responsibility, but it could identify them and it could bring those to council's attention. So um, after hearing your comments, I would revise 1.1.2 to say assisting in the identification and strengths and weaknesses of local beautification environmental initiatives, which is still a pretty broad definition, but I, I think it meets what you uh, were intending uh, without being so narrow to say only municipal uh, initiatives. Uh, and the other one that I uh, that, that you raised uh, that I just wanted to speak to 4.3. Um, that is, uh, that should be struck from this terms of reference. The intention is not to have these meetings as in camera meetings. And frankly, that's just a leftover from a, from a, a template. This is based on the same structure as the HR committee, uh, where those meetings are by definition in camera. Uh, and so that was just a holdover from reusing that template. Well, thank you for that, Mr. Gibbon. Councilor Demota. Well, and I appreciate uh, that information that uh, our CAO has just uh, related to us. And I'm glad that some of those comments were made. And although our strategic relevance probably is included in when we're contemplating communities and within committee. However, when we discuss why are we developing these terms of reference, I think because there's a recommendation there, there should be some strategic relevance included in, um, I think, the recommendation. And like this it has, this has nothing to do really with, um, you know, with men uh, missing this or anything. But if, if we have relevant legislation, inclusion consideration, financial financial considerations, uh, to me, like there is a purpose behind developing the terms of reference and it does hit when you review this, quite a few items on our strategic plan. And uh, I'm just wondering if, you know, having some of that in here could help us or just help the whole understanding of, you know, just in this recommendation itself, what are the strategic relevances so that we can formalize a little more why we're doing this, right? Because some of those comments that uh, Mr. Gibbon just made um, aren't really reflected physically in the document on the relevance behind why we're moving forward with this. Thank you. Does that make sense? Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Deputy Mayor Alnick, um, I'll uh, acknowledge that there's a section missing in the RFD, which is strategic relevance. 
So if that were in the RFD, I think that's exactly what Councillor DeMoto is picking up on. Um, that's a pretty significant oversight from a staff RFD, and so uh, noted. Um, I wouldn't suggest including the strategic relevance in the terms of reference, no. um, you know, uh, because uh, the next council may have different strategic directions, and they would want to check this terms of reference. So, um, but no, fully acknowledge that there is that section is missing from the RFD, although. Uh, I also know that Council's, you know, well informed of your strategic plan, and I think the idea of engaging the community, um, uh, engaging expertise of outside parties, you know, it does hit, as Council Demo said, on a number of the points. So um, maybe it's, uh, it should have been specifically stated. Um, and uh, I know that Council's uh, aware of your strategic plan, and, and hopefully you feel that this fits with that, those directions. Thank you. Any other Comments, discussion by council members. There being none, I would look for a motion uh, regarding what I perceive to be the terms of reference as amended based on the conversations that we've had. Um, I think that would be the spirit of the motion that it uh, to move forward. Councillor, sorry, CEO, Mr. Gillen. Thanks, Deputy Mayor Malik. I, I am comfortable uh, that I was able to capture the vast majority of the changes, and I'm happy to present a as revised version to Council next week, with one exception that I just needed a bit more specificity on. In terms of membership, right now it is blank mem blank councillors and blank public members. Um, and we did discuss a couple of other, you know, uh, Parks Canada, Tourism Jasper, Chamber of Commerce. So Council can needs to specify that. Um, would you like to see, you know, a, a committee of yeah, how many people should be on it? Um, and should there be any members of the general public, which would be public members, um, in addition to people from specified agencies? Like, so maybe a little brief discussion about that, a little bit more clarity, because I, I heard them mentioned, but I didn't really get some clarity on what exactly council thought. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilor Waxer. I think that's an interesting question. Um, I think in general, I would be very enthusiastic about having uh, inviting members of the public, but I wonder if it's um, if there's enough clarity to draw people in. Um, but, and because I know that in some circumstance, we have difficulty recruiting volunteers for for boards but um or not us anymore but uh uh so i i don't have a strong opinion on that uh, i do think that it is it is strategic and and uh relevant and worthwhile to include um those other organizations and i don't know how you word it because should they decline in one year or another you don't want to uh make the uh the uh committee ineffective so perhaps by invitation would be the word thank you for that councillor waxer i'll recognize uh councillor demoter followed by mayor ireland well i i appreciate that and, and maybe um instead of you know, forcing us to start throwing things into those slots. Um, if the administration comes back with uh, a revised um, copy of what was understood today and give us a week to, to contemplate those and debate them into um, motion next week, I think it would be appropriate because there are some considerations and maybe things that we're not considering today. Thank you for that, Councillor DeModa. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Um, what I heard from Mr. Given was a bit more direction with respect to the constituent elements of, of the committee itself. And so um, what I have heard is a place for institutional members, so Parks Canada, Chamber of Commerce, um, whether Tourism Jasper would be interested or other groups, 
Um, I appreciate um, Councillor Waxer's remarks that maybe it should be that these groups are invited, but if they don't fill the, the position that's offered, it's not the end of the committee. I, that I understand um, what is being suggested there, and I'm not sure the wording either. For myself, though, the, the bigger question remains about whether or not this is better led as an administrative um, tool or a council tool. So it does fit within um, our strategic priorities. And Mr. Given has addressed that, that the, the RFD might have indicated how um, engagement in community communities in bloom aligns with our existing strategic priorities. And, you know, I think it's fair enough to say that it does, but that doesn't mean that operationally council has to be involved further. We, we support it. And again, I, I throw out the reference to the traffic advisory committee where it is so intensely operational that it's difficult for a councillor, I think, to have a really effective role. Um, but I, I leave that open. That's just a, a personal view. But I, if we are sending um, Mr. Given or administration back to revise these terms of reference, I think some direction on whether councillors are a part of it, and if so, how many, um, or whether it might be an operational committee, um, deserves some discussion among council so that we can give direction to administration. Thank you, Your Worship. I will recognize I uh, Councillor Covered by MP, followed by Councillor Waxer. I'm wondering if it could be both. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, I'm wondering if it could be both administration and one councillor on the committee, and maybe two members at large. So we have the organization. Because I think in the past, like, I think we do have some. <clears throat> gardeners and different companies in the town that might be interested in sitting on the committee. So if we were to set up a structure where it's one councillor, maybe two from operations, the um, Chamber of Commerce, Tourism Jasper, uh, Parks Canada, an invitation, and then two members at large and put it out there. Um, all right. So I'm going to go to CEO Given first. Uh, no. Okay. Um, Councilor Waxer. My comment would be that I I see that the communities in bloom as a big picture perspective on uh, the beautification of the community as well as the livability of the community, and so I. And that responsibility and involvement from the community in the broadest sense is um, part of what the Communities in Bloom people would be marking the community Jasper on. And so I kind of liked the, uh, the having the councillor as the, as the chair, because looking at it from the really big picture and that I see that there is significant involvement from both community development and operations and it would be um so i um that's why i um so it would be awkward to have administer one of those administrative people take responsibility when i think that there's other um when i think that it's such a big picture perspective so i supported the way it was written with the uh councillor chairing and um but I wouldn't have no objection to uh, administration sitting on the committee as well. Thank you, Councillor Waxer. Councillor Demona. Thank you. Well, I'm. Uh, I think any committee that's going to have political ramifications in the community, um, regardless of what level, I, I think council members should be a part of whether it's traffic advisory or. Uh, communities in bloom and, and the reason I say that is that I'd like to see council members as part of those committees but maybe not chair because uh, I think that 
maybe giving political input or taking back input, political input back to council um, as information from what you've learned on those uh, different um, commitments, I, I think is helpful for us as a whole. So that's my position on it. And, you know, I'm glad that Councillor uh, Waxer is talking about the big picture thing. You know, when, when we open up our meetings, we, we acknowledge our, our land acknowledgements. Um, you know, with treaty members, and and I think that there could be an element here of an opportunity uh, because we're talking about communities and women being on these treaty territories. Uh, you know, maybe lacking some consideration there, and, and whether that you know uh, could be represented through Parks Canada Agency or not. Um, you know, I think that on a broader scope, we should be considering those things. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Demota, Mr. Gibbon. Deputy Mayor Malik, I'll just say from, from my perspective as CAO, um, I would be uh, reluctant to uh, have members of administration as members of the committee. Um, the committee is intended to be advisory to council. Administration has our own ways of getting advice to you. Um, and I would be I would be concerned about blurring the lines if we had a member or members of administration on the committee that are in a position to influence the advice that comes to council from the Communities and Bloom Committee. Uh, if, it, if you're getting advice from administrations, you get it in the form of an RFD. Uh, so I, I would be concerned about that. I am fully supportive of administration being there to support the community committee, provide advice to the committee, and to hear from the committee. Um, the committee, again, is advisory to council and does provide input into administration, but does not give direction to administration. So I'm, you know, I, I, I'm comfortable with that level of um, uh flexibility i guess um but adding and defining it as a part of somebody's job to be on this committee i think is uh again starts to sort of confuse the the responsibilities um, i would distinguish it from the traffic advisory committee uh which starts to be more technical and subjective i mean when we're talking about beautification and environmental initiatives a lot of those are more subjective you know where um you know do we need a traffic sign here? Where should we put a, a handicap parking stall, a disabled accessible parking stall on the street? Those are more technical matters. Uh, and so that's where I see that one being more administratively led. And I would just maybe cycle back to some of the previous discussion that we had with council. I think the first report that you saw in this was a recommendation that we discontinue Communities in Blue because administration could do these things internally. Uh, and that recommendation uh, in hearing that recommendation committee, I think, uh, rightly said, well, there's an opportunity to engage the public and the community in this. It shouldn't just be left up to us or administration and house to do these things. We're missing an opportunity to engage. And so those are all reasons why I think that this really should be focused on the public and the other agencies um, and where administration should be playing a supporting role. Thank you, Mr. Gibbon. Councilor Demoto. Well, that just sounded like a whole lot of, this could be a community conversation. But the reason why we can't do that is because our community conversations are based on life stages. And like other committees, we decided not to go in this direction because they could be filled in by those community conversations. So is Communities in Bloom could communities in bloom be part of that greater process? I don't know, but if we have um, maybe administrative support to facilitate a community conversation based around communities in bloom, then maybe we can do that because we're talking about community engagement, not involving administration and maybe having a council member assigned to it. That sounds a lot like what we're doing with community conversation. So just food for thought in that direction and structurally, I don't know if we're set up for that. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor Demona. Mr. Gibbon? Uh, you know, I think Councillor Demona's hit on something here. A uh, couple observations first. Uh, there was an environmental community conversation and council supported the removal of that in 2024 on the administration's recommendation that it was the most likely attended um, and that those issues were coming up through the life stages anyhow. Um, and so 
these types of matters that we're discussing in this terms of reference, you know, fostering community pride and engagement and maintaining the appearance and livability of the community, providing an effective link between the community and municipal administration, long term success. Yeah, all those things could be done through community conversations in their life stage. You know, it's just sort of about what, what questions we ask, and, and <coughs> conversations is really not so much about us asking questions, but about the community leading where they wish to go, and administration captures that information and, and you know, acts on it where appropriate. Uh, the other thing that I just would bring to council's attention, one, the reason there's a terms of reference here is because administration understood that council wished to participate in the capital C Communities in Bloom TM registered trademark initiative, which is a national competition that requires formal participation. If 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 the intent is just to engage the community and pride and engagement and to hear what they're having to say, we don't need to be in communities that, you know, capital C communities in bloom trademark registered. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't need to be a part of that <clears throat> initiative or event or competition in order to hear what the community has to say about beautification and to engage in all those matters. Uh, we could simply annually ask them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, I just want to make a distinction between the communities in bloom, which is a very specific thing um, that's a part of this national competition that requires some form and the intent to engage the community on these matters because we can we can do one without the other. Thank you for that. Um, councillors, we've had some debate. Uh, do we have a councillor willing to propose a motion? Councillor DeMoto. I am proposing, not moving. This is just, again, taking consensus here, uh, that committee receive the communities in blue in terms of reference this information <clears throat> right now. And maybe bring it back to the next committee the whole see if we want to formalize our commitment to in quotations the greater communities in blue registration. Councillor Kalarapi. At one of the community of the holes before, that was the whole idea of bringing this back was because a number of councillors at that time felt that we didn't want to lose the opportunity that we wanted to be part of communities and we only wanted uh, that big picture. Like um, we felt that it was good for the community and that yeah but it's not there this year and that's why i believe um we agreed to go and uh, get the funding for the euros this year but um i know councillor hall and councillor waxer was very much in favor of all reviving the community and blooms you know I, you know what I mean? It was great for the community, the Patty Up Tuesdays, a lot of that, and that's what that committee drove, and all of that has died. Thank you for that. Councillors, any other comments? Councillor Waxer. I would support what Councillor Kelleher MP just said. I'm just working on, on wording the uh, the uh, motion, I just because I thought that noted revisions might be a little bit vague for administration. So if anyone has some suggestions, but I I agree with Councillor Kelleher MP that we should move this forward today and not just accept from um, information. Thank you for that, Councillor Waxer. You said you were working on a motion. I am, um, and I could maybe start it and be, and with some assistance from those of you at the table. I'm finding it a little bit harder not actually being there, so 
Uh, the committee recommend council approve the communities in bloom terms of reference with the note with noted revisions, which include um, invitations for participation to Parks Canada, uh, Tourism Jasper, and the Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce. But I don't think that that's complete enough, so I would be happy to accept other assistance. Mayor Ireland. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. As I thought I heard from Mr. Given, administration would be content with a motion following the first alternative, that is directing administration to return to a future committee with revised terms of reference. And Mr. Given had some clarity with respect to um, section one, purpose and responsibilities, and he detailed those. Um, he had confirmed a change to section four, eliminating one of those clauses, but he needed some direction with respect to membership. And based on our most recent bit of discussion, if there is consensus at the table, I think it is that it remain um, a committee and it has to be a committee to engage nationally and there seems to be a willingness to do that so um, the membership would be some number of counselors assisted by some number of staff who are not technically members of the committee some institutional membership we discussed that um, and an opportunity for public membership and if that is sufficiently clear for administration, and I wait to hear from Mr. Gibbon about that, then I would make the motion that committee direct administration revise the terms of reference uh, based on today's discussion and return to a future committee with that revised draft. All that contingent on whether or not we have been clear enough in our discussions for Mr. Given to actually get staff to revise the terms of reference in those particulars. Uh, Mr. Given. Deputy Mayor Malnick, yeah, I believe that, uh, you know, with that clarity, I think I'm comfortable that administration can take this way and make some changes that are in line with the discussion today. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, to the point, I would also be okay with if uh, I believe we can turn those around if council wished to see this at council next week. Uh, if it gets to council and we got it wrong, you can send it back to committee. But rather than waiting a number of weeks to hit committee and then go to the following council meeting, uh, I think there's enough clarity that I'm comfortable if committee wished to recommend that council approve the revised uh, terms of reference. You can see those revisions. If you have confidence in us, you can see those revisions uh, for the council meeting. If we got them right, then you can accept the, the revised terms of reference. If we didn't get them right, you can send it back. Um, so I'm comfortable turning it around sooner rather than uh, waiting for the committee next, referring it back to a future committee meeting. So uh, I want to make sure I got this correct. We had uh, Mayor Ireland had made, a, a proposed a motion, made a motion. I think I made it, but I can, I can find two. Well, I, I also want to just make sure um, Councillor Waxer, you were, the wording you used was you were willing to make the motion, but you <laughs> didn't make the motion. Is that correct? We will call it that. That's, I'm absolutely <laughs> happy with uh, Mayor Ireland's comments. So. Okay, thank you. So we do have a motion on the floor. Administration is clear, I do believe. And I would ask if there's any other discussion on the motion. Mayor Ireland? Oh, sorry. Nope. Mayor Ireland? Just to clarify, I'm, I am prepared to change the last word of the motion that I made um, from to a future committee to a future council meeting. 
So that gives the opportunity, as Mr. Given indicated, to speed this along and bring it back next week. Perfect. I think that's the end of discussion. I, we have a motion on the floor. I'll call the question. All those in favor? And we are carried. So, item 7.5, business license review, and that is a Councillor DeMoto. Okay. Well, I had this uh, last week um, to discuss here today, but, you know, again, given time, it was put at the bottom because there were other things that we needed to tackle. And hopefully with uh, some uh, broader understanding, we can kind of elevate the, the priority for discussion on this. And the reason I'm bringing it forward is I'm wondering if there is an opportunity that council would like to maybe give um, direction to administration to explore, um, you know, the value of what we're delivering. Does council consider business licenses just as a processing fee to grant operation within the community as far as business goes or this council um, see this as uh, a way to maybe divert some uh, taxation dollars from residents and businesses to appropriate places. Because right now, um, you know, we're our tax dollars are going to like the greater pot. So um, I'm going to use an example of a uh, business where a home based business where you might be traveling around delivering service to other members of the community. I know that uh, Councillor Hall at one point had mentioned that her business is a lot different than, let's say, a hotel in the community. And should businesses be looked at differently? And I didn't mean to focus hers out because we have different uh, members of, of council that have different, different businesses in the community, right? One, mine represents alcohol. Um, uh, Councillor uh, Wilson has a uh, construction company. Um, so when we look at things like that, are we contributing the right resources to the right things? Hotels, um, you know, they have signs up in front. They need some uh, need line painting in front of their streets and curbs. So should that all be included in the greater uh, levy? Uh, should those be included in a part and all those things like um, the level of detail? I, I don't wish to get into what gets paid with what, but uh, again, it's just something for us to look at in equity uh, for uh, residents and businesses. And you know, when I look at our strategic, um, you know, relevance here, you know, under organizational uh, excellence. Uh, we want to ensure that residents receive quality service that provides strong value for dollar. Uh, is $165 across the board for every business. Does that relate to that? So uh, we want to pursue alternate revenue uh, sources and equitable distribution costs. So I think that applies there. And then even though uh, we wouldn't be advocating to higher levels of government, but within you know advocacy, uh, pursue the acquisition of tools and authorities to enhance service delivery and equity, uh, delivery, equity, and affordability. So could we pursue those acquisition of tools that we already have and just use them efficiently? So um, there are opportunities. I know in the past that uh, Mayor Ireland has mentioned that maybe there could be an environmental levy for some of those things outside of utilities that we do in the community. Um, could this be um, an avenue that we could pursue to facilitate some of those costs and services? So I'm going to leave it at this. Um, I'm not going to say we need direction here, given the time and everything. Um, I would say I'd like to bring this forward to uh, the next committee of the whole. Just um, this was more of a placeholder for a broader discussion to uh, have a greater consideration and debate um, to where we want to see this go in the future because the budget's going to be coming up in the fall and this might have some uh, consequences and more so for when we go for business licenses in 2024 because courses are already back to bar. And so um, I think 
this will give us enough time to contemplate some of those things that I just spoke to. And I'm open to any other discussion that anybody wants to say anything. Thanks. Thank you for that, Councillor Demota. Do councillors have any questions for Councillor Demota at this point? We have it um, as a placeholder then that this will appear in the next committee of the whole. Maybe not at the end. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Deputy Mayor Malik, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, think about that. Appreciate that when we have uh, council member requests to you know, administration, uh, they can land sort of wherever under business. Um, so uh, my suggestion would be that there's a motion from the committee to uh, refer discussion of the business license review to the next committee of the whole meeting. And that way it'll be on the agenda. Uh, and uh, just as a matter of course, uh, that we can put it up there recognizing it's one that kind of wasn't time to get into fulsomely today. Uh, we'll make sure to put it at the top of the list for, for the next few polls. So, uh, and again, that, that motion just sort of formalizes that. Great, thank you for that. So I'll look to Councillor Demota, I believe, for the motion. Right. I would uh, like to recommend, or actually, uh, I move the committee um, through the item of business license review to the following committee of the whole for discussion. Thank you for that. There is a motion on the floor. Is there any discussion or questions by other councillors? Councillor Ella Harvey. I'm curious. Um, would you like to see what other communities are paying or? It would be interesting to know how other communities deal with um, their licensing. You know, like if you look at them, their licensing is tied to their DNF. Um, it would be interesting what, you know, because I know there's some towns that only don't even charge for business licensing. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to see, you know, you know, like we had that report like on our taxes that, you know, Jasper, Residents pay with the, I think the second lowest in an area, and our businesses are the second highest. I think it all kind of ties together. It would be interesting to have some of that information for discussion because you're looking at like as a cross value. So if we look at um, a property that has a lot of value, they're paying a lot of taxes. And I get what you're saying. You know, if you have a very base business that paying one sixty five. So it, it will make for a great, interesting conversation on where it goes. Yeah, I'm sure you Well, I, I'd like to see where administration's at on that too. And, um, you know, given uh, a lot of the stuff that we've been moving recently, I, I just don't know with tasking more things, if that's within the scope right now of, of the capacity of, of our admin team. So I, I'd like to explore that, um, you know, after going through the motion action list, this might be a motion action um, that comes forward. So I would recommend coming forward with that. And I'm glad that you said that, and that could be a topic for, of conversation. I don't know if we want to direct administration to have stuff for us, or if we want to, two weeks from now, give those types of directions to, to come back. So I, I wasn't really looking forward to, to getting any movement going on these things, but those are those are the things that we need to talk about. Okay, that's fine. I'm not sure if you want to move that, that's fine. No, that's fine. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor and we had some discussion. I'm looking around the room if there's any other comments or discussion. There being none, I would like to call a question. All those in favor? And that's scary. Thank you. Which brings us to the motion action list. <laughs> and in Mr. Gibbons' absence, there's been some changes where administration doing what they do best is um, making it easier for council um, with some of the additions and changes that were on here. Um, we would be looking for I guess the motion to um, 
change the motion action list based on today's discussions as well as the recommendations here. Uh, Mr. Given, do you wish to um, make comment on the motion action list? Uh, just that there are uh, two, um, well, I guess there are some items uh, I think that are captured by the first part of that motion based on discussion today. Uh, the early learning child care strategy. Uh, we don't, you know, we're not advising you of a change, but the actions today have changed that, and that would be captured in that motion recommending to the mayor. Uh, and then there are a couple of items that, that you'll see in the status administration is providing a bit more of the justification for where we're asking for extended timelines. Uh, the clean energy improvement program. Um, we have a draft of the bylaw. Uh, we're going to be working with the Municipal Climate Change Action Center. There's a number of other municipalities in front of us. Uh, and they advise us that it'll probably be June or July. Uh, it's June by the time they'd be able to look at that and give us feedback. And then likely July by the time we could be able to get back to you. Um, under the Hakone initiatives, uh, administration is obviously working on uh, the upcoming conference um, and uh, as well as delegation planning. Uh, and that's where some we're asking for an extended deadline. Um, on, on that item. Um, and then the others, I think you can see where we're recommending uh, items that can be deleted because they have been dealt with. Uh, and on the final page, there's the retroactive RCMP costs. I believe all members of council received correspondence from Alberta municipalities that clarified that as a municipality under 5,000 population, the RCMP retroactive costs will not have an impact on Jasper or communities like Jasper. And so administration uh, is just not what we haven't copy and pasted that into a formal RFD to council. Um, we uh, felt that that might suffice and would recommend to take this item off the list uh, unless council said otherwise. Um, other than that, I think all the items are captured there and your suggestion, Deputy Mayor Malnick, about incorporating any action or, or items that came out of today's meeting uh, would deal with better. And, and I know you mentioned one of those actions being in uh, the third bullet point. Uh, sorry, fourth bullet point being the early learning. I, I noted that there would be two other changes, one being in public transportation study, um, conducting the e-bike sharing project that'll change to 2024. And then the last one I noted was the communities in bloom. There'll be a change in the timing because that'll come back to us in May. Deputy Mayor Malik, uh, we will turn it around and uh, I think at our likely at our next committee the whole meeting, you'll see that we'll be able to hopefully we'll be able to say that one was dealt with, council adopted it, and now we recommend that you take it off. Uh, so we could do that today, um, or we can wait until it's been formally adopted by council. Okay, thank you for that. So I believe we need a motion to um, accept the motion action list with the changes based on, oh, sorry, Councilor Waxer. No, I was just getting ready to make the motion, that's all. Okay, before we have you make the motion, I see two other hands, uh, Mayor Ireland followed by Councilor Demona. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Mellon. Just two brief questions for administration. Um, and very tangentially, um, you mentioned, Mr. Given, the, um, the information that was shared with respect to retroactive RCFP costs, and they don't apply here because we have a population less than 5,000. I'm just curious to know whether you know or the policing grant in particular, policing legislation, what the province thinks our population is. I know it fluctuates. And the reason I ask is that I recently did an interview with CBC and in the written version, they implied that I had indicated the population is 4,100, which mm -hmm. it is not. And I made no such reference. And yet somehow, they came up with a population for Jasper of 4,100 residents. Um, my understanding was that officially we're 47, 46 or some such number. But uh, just for clarity, I wonder whether we know what the province thinks we are. Uh, 
Go ahead, Mr. Uh, Gibbon. Deputy Mayor Alnick, uh, so two different numbers. First, the federal the 2021 federal census lists us at uh, 4,029. Um, that's what is reflected on the federal government's uh, census website as the 2021 population. Um, and uh, the government of Alberta has recently uh, moved to doing estimates. And so your question about what the province has us at is a good question. Uh, and I don't have that at hand because they have recently moved to uh, on a more frequent than the federal census uh, estimating population based on some method methodology that they have. Um, and I think the province is using that for the basis of uh, annual grant programs that reflect population. So uh, I believe their process, and I, I will confirm this, but I believe their process is to refer to the federal uh, estimates. So for 2021, our population was 4,029. Mm -hmm. And then the province has some sort of methodology where they say, okay, so based on that, in 2023, your population should be X. Uh, I don't have that number at hand, and I can't find it quickly. Um, but I will uh, find it and forward it to council by just so you have it for reference. Well, thank you for that. I'm surprised to hear that number. Um, quite a decline, I think, and we have many grants that are contingent on that. There was a time when our population, we thought, was around 4,800, where we discontinued the practice of our own local census because we didn't want to get over 5,000 and then um, be subjected to policing costs. But if we have grants that are contingent on that number and we are only recorded as a population of 4,000, it might be worth our while to consider our own municipal census um, if it's going to translate to the more numbers. Thank you, Your Worship, uh, just in Mary Malik, uh, with, with at your leave. Um, the province is moving to this, has moved to this method of estimating population, in fact, to not to deter municipalities from undertaking municipal census, but to reduce the benefit uh, because the province has said that they will use their estimate as the determining factor of population. So either the federal census or in between federal censuses, the province's estimate is what will determine uh, population for the purpose of grants. So I think that there was, uh, particularly in fast growing times, there were municipalities, there's a significant incentive to fund annual census, uh, municipal census. The province, I think, has explicitly and intentionally uh, decided to remove the incentive to do that. Well, thank you for that. Um, all the more reason then to continue with our. Our quest for designation and uh, modifiers to apply for um, the visitor population that we serve, because we we fall further behind if the province is going to estimate our population and estimate it more. Um, we are even further behind when the reality is we have to provide services uh, in the summer, at least for 20 or 25,000 people, including residents and visitors. Anyway, I believe that um, subject for a, a further discussion another day. My only other um, comment with respect to the motion action list, and Mr. Given, um, you were away or just leaving um, the day that we got the announcement for the six and a half million dollars for affordable housing, which was a very exciting day indeed. Um, but, but all of our ability to spend that money and get housing in the ground for residents is contingent on a number of things, including um, the governance of the Jasper Community Housing Corporation. That is on the motion action list um, to come back in June. And I just wanted to reiterate, because you missed the discussion earlier, that from my perspective, if anything has to be postponed, it not be that particular matter that, that we deal with um, the JCHC governance issue at the earliest possibility, hopefully in June of this year, so we can get ourselves aligned to take advantage as quickly as possible 
of the, the money that has come our way. Thank you, Your Worship. I am struggling to remember. Did we have a motion on the floor? We did not have a motion on the floor. Uh, Councillor Waxer was going to make the motion. Yep, that we accept the motion action list with the river um, as presented, I guess. Uh, is that clear for administration, given the discussion we had? Any items that we talked about? Councillors, any further discussion? All those in favor? And that's carried. Councillor upcoming meetings, if uh, councillors would like to comment, um, please feel free. I think a number of us will be at the Recycling Industry and Waste Reduction uh, session on Thursday. Um, and... Uh, are there any council reports? Not for upcoming. Um, Councillor Keller Abbey. Um, last Wednesday, I went to Grand Cash to attend the um, Charming of the sod at Victor Lake for the new Indigenous uh, Kininu um, property that um, we hope will be built by next year. And um, it will be a beautiful Indigenous property and it's named Kininu, which means home. A hundred people attended, including our MLA, Martin Long, and um, Minister Long, our Alberta Tourism Minister. On Thursday and Friday, I attended the Bloom Elected Officials course, and it was really interesting. Talked about strategic plan and priority based businesses, or priority based budgeting, sorry. And um, I have to say, Jasper, we're doing a great job. And um, we're kind of leading the way. Everybody there has not done priority based budgeting. Um, I think for council, uh, it would be an awesome half day or full day session for all of us to attend. I learned so much. I learned a lot about how to present our budget to the public for public buy-in. Um, I have to say, um, two days were really worthwhile. A lot of, um, you know, went over um, the responsibilities of being a counselor. We always learn something new. But I have to say, um, I really enjoy the portion of the strategic planning and the priority based budgeting. It was really well worth my, my time to go. Thank you for that. I want to say something else. Oh, sorry. And I want to compliment um, Director Nonja. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she went to this course and we talked about how Director Nonja and brought this into Jasper, and I was so proud of her, and I would like you to pass that on to you. Thank you for that. Other counselors? All right. Upcoming events. Uh, as opposed to reading all through the upcoming events, they are there on the agenda. Um, are there any upcoming events that are not listed that should be on the uh, on the agenda? Mayor Ireland? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Well, not necessarily that they should be on the agenda, but um, just for general awareness, uh, Friday of this week is the National Day of Mourning um, for WCB. And fortunately, we are not a community that gets visited with, with such tragedy um, often, but it's worth reflecting on what happens out in the, in the broader world. And uh, on a more positive note, uh, on Saturday, um, our community is hosting the Canadian Rockies half marathon, and there's a, a half marathon at 10K and 5K run, and there will be a bunch of visitors in 
town and uh, it's brought to us by uh, Multisport Canada, who also um, brings us visitors for the Fondo in June and last fall, the Pints and Pinot Run, and uh, in other years, um, a Winterfest or, or ski races. So, um, just something to be aware of. And if you can offer support to two runners who are visiting our town for the weekend, uh, do that. Thank you for that. Uh, Waxer. Uh, just further to what uh, Mayor Arlen just said, uh, the Multisport Canada uh, partnered with the Jasper Healthcare Foundation to offer this event. And I understand that they're looking for more volunteers to run the event. So if anyone has spare time, they, um, they'd be welcome to come and join me to in uh, volunteering uh, to run a, a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you for that. Council Waxer, Council DeMoto. Well, I just, uh, I think next week, I believe is uh, Canadian Mental Health Week from the first to the seventh. And I, I think that's uh, worthy of recognition, even though um, I'm not sure, you know, if that's a, proclamation that needs to be made in our own municipality but if not maybe consider that for next year um and maybe not part of the future but uh past uh 33 years ago the hubble telescope was launched into uh space on this day and uh you know not all of us are rocket scientists but i'm really happy with uh, a lot of the things that we talked about today and um also, 64 years ago, the St. Lawrence Seaway officially opened, uh, linking the Atlantic to the Great Lakes, uh, which provides a great segue for us linking ourselves to outside. So having said that, I would like to move that we adjourn today. Um, well, we do have a motion on the floor for adjournment. Um, I'm looking at Mayor Island like there's a thought that he wishes to to um I don't know what the people do with your... I do indeed, and I am remiss. I neglected to mention another event that should be on our calendar, and that is the women in business event. So that's um, Friday, I believe, of this week. So something to be aware of, and I know had discussions whether there is council representation and I understood that Councillor Kelly Henty might be attending and that is greatly appreciated. It's going to be difficult for me to commit on that particular day, but I'm happy to know that we will have council representation and it's worth just reminding whoever happens to be watching on our on our Zoom channel that the event is upcoming on Friday of this week at noon. Thank you for that, and I believe tickets are available until tomorrow. Um, I would like to thank uh, staff who have come in uh, to this meeting. We chose not to uh, take a break for lunch, as I thought the meeting would end a little bit quicker. So thank you to uh, uh, staff who are online, to staff who are in the room, and to counselors who are bearing with us. We get to the part of the meeting where just before we adjourn, today is also National License Plate Day. <laughs> and it was in 1901 <laughs> in New York where they started to charge for a dollar for the license plate. And because of that, we now have license plates and we can use our license plates for our paid parking. So it's a great. Uh, Achievement, and I do want to recognize one other achievement. Since today is Game Five of the Oilers playoffs, I wish the Oilers all the best. On this day in 1985, <laughs> in a playoff series, Wayne Gretzky scored seven goals, and I wish the Oilers that type of luck tonight. Um, it would be pretty hard to match that. But with that, I do recognize we had a motion on the floor to return. I would now like to call a question. All those in favor. And we are adjourned. Thank you to the public who 
participated and watched today. And we look forward to seeing you at our next council meeting next Tuesday at 1.30 p.m.